going on? A Friday. John will be joining us later in the show. Of course, he's in Las Vegas for the Mount West Conference Tournament. New Mexico is uh, practicing right now. So they practice until about 3.30-ish. And then John will get in the building. And then he's going to try to set up. And hopefully he will join us by 4 p.m. When we also will have Kevin AC on the show from Seoul, South Korea. That should be interesting. If you thought Kevin's phone was a little wonky in the States, just wait till you get him across... Uh, you know, in Seoul, South Korea to see if his phone works there. He says that his phone, I would is, laugh if it's better. I know. Right. Like, Hey, Kevin, um, your phone actually works amazing in Korea, but he says it works. He told John last night that his, uh, his phone works beautifully in Seoul, South Korea. So we will get him on the show here at 4 PM. And also David J from mad friars. He was, uh, supposed to watch the Padres spring breakout game today, but it got canceled because of rain got rescheduled for later next week, I believe. Um, so we'll talk to David J of mad Friars to get his thoughts on the Dylan cease trade, because I want to know what he thinks of the deal. I want to know about the prospects that were traded away in the deal. A lot of people say this, this is a lot of uh, players here that the Padres traded away high end talent. So we'll get his thoughts here uh, coming up later in the show. Also, a couple giveaways that we have uh, for the show today. A pair of tickets to see Cage the Elephant. Uh, we have a uh, other sh- other prizes during the show today. Delmar um, tickets there, so we will give that away during Trainwreck Radio. But yesterday afternoon, um, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> it, it wasn't pretty for the Aztecs. It was one of those games in the first half where you're thinking to yourself, Wow, they're they're really going to lose three in a row. They're they're really going to go into March Madness on a three game losing streak. Now it was only a five point game at the end of the first half, thanks to a Darion Trammell buzzer beating three pointer that was a horrible play by UNLV. It was the only three of the first half from the Aztecs was on that I guess wide open little you know runner. little runner one footed three pointer by Darion Trammell, but. That first half for the Aztecs yesterday, Brent, and you know it because you were here. It was ugly. It was very ugly. And they have not looked like themselves for the better part of a couple weeks now. And at times this year, it has been a struggle. It has been, it was, it felt like one of those games and it ended up being one of those games where it's get the ball to Jaden. You have to save the day. Now he pretty much did that putting up 30 plus points and 16 rebounds. But you're looking at this game at this game yesterday in the first half and you're thinking to yourself, are we really going to be seeing the Aztecs team going on a three game losing streak into March Madness? See, I wasn't really worried in the first half cuz they've done that in the first half so much this year and then they would just come back in the second half. So I've kind of learned not to sweat too much about the first half. The second half I started to get worried when they went up about seven and it seemed like they're right about on the brink of closing the game out. And then every time they would get right on the brink, then they would let, you know, they're let them come right back in and get back into the game. And, you know, in overtime, you know, we had two great looks at the end of that guy's little runner running layup that he tried that he just missed. And that shot at the end of the game, they had two good looks. They just didn't go in. They had two great looks uh, they had a 10 point lead that they gave away in that second half. Jaden Ladee was at times the only Aztecs player that could get them a bucket and he got them the bucket to win the game. They were down by a point and he's, he saved the game for the Aztecs. he, He showed yesterday why he should be an All-American. He also showed yesterday why he should have been the Mount West Conference Player of the Year. Now, it's going to be such a fascinating matchup tonight because you have the Mount West Conference Player of the Year voted by the coaches in Great Osabor versus the Mount West Conference Player of the Year voted by the media in Jay Ledee. So we will finally get to see which player should have really been the consensus player of the year in the Mount West Conference um, this was a matchup that I, I like I've, I wanted to happen really bad. And I know Utah state struggled a little bit, a little bit. They went into overtime with Fresno state yesterday. And then you had San Diego state going overtime with UNLV. So they didn't both those teams that are playing tonight 
did not have easy games in their first round of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. They just, they didn't. They struggled to get to this point, but it's the right matchup. It's the right outcome. And I, I just, I mean, this feels like a big game. It feels like a big game if you're an Aztecs fan. For tonight, the, the team that won the Mountain West Conference regular season title versus the team that, you know, has been the top of the class the last however many years, it's coming off a national championship run. You have Jane Ledee, who's going to be an All-American. Consensus, like, should have been maybe the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. Going up against a team that tonight won the conference regular season. So I, I can't wait. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's a, it's a must-watch game if you're an Aztec fan, for sure. Yeah, we got the number, take on the number one seed in order to, you know, it'll be what, our seventh conference championship game in a row seven conference championship tonight. uh what is it 16th straight year that they've won at least one game in the yeah. mountain West conference tournament so i mean those accomplishments right there are fantastic um but even though they won yesterday there are still some issues and these issues are hopefully going to be resolved before they get into march madness and and if you've been watching this team you know that what is one of their biggest issues right now, shooting the ball, shooting three. And the two guys that you put on that list is struggling the most would be Reese Waters and would be Micah Parrish. I know Micah Parrish, I don't think he made a three yesterday. Reese Waters, I had a, I think he had one bucket, but other than that, I didn't see him do much in the game. And he has been really, really struggling of late. Really. I don't know if it's because he's coming off the bench and he was a starter to start the season. I don't know what's wrong with Micah Parrish. Like at times it looks like he's afraid to shoot. And when he does shoot, it's not even close. And I thought this was a, a pretty fascinating answer yesterday after the game from Brian Dutcher talking about the struggles of Reese Waters and Micah Parrish in yesterday's game. Take a listen. Well, that's how he's on the floor because he guards at a high level. He rebounds. You know, uh, I felt bad for Mikey. He missed two free throws. We were up two at the end of the game. He missed them both. And so I just said, to be a really good basketball player, you have to sh have a short memory. So anything that happened today is it's in the rearview mirror. Come out and make every shot you take next game and shoot like you think you're going to. You know, it's, it's important for a coach to give his team confidence, even when it doesn't seem like they deserve any. But Reese and Mike are going to make shots tomorrow. I'm convinced of it. They're too good of players. They're too good of shooters. And I think uh, the ocean will open up tomorrow. It'll look like the size of the ocean, the rim. We're making shots tomorrow. That's a coach that knows that two guys are struggling and he's going to try to give them as much confidence as possible. He knows like, Hey, uh, if you were to ask him off the record, he'd be like, these guys are really struggling. I don't know. I don't really know what else to do, but a good coach that he is in front of all the media, which I'm sure Micah and Reese are probably going to get wind of this or hear this knowing Hey, look, I need to breathe. I need to give these guys as much confidence as possible and hopefully speak it into existence because it does feel like it, like one of these games, they have to break out, right? Like one of these games, they have to break out at least one of them and make like four threes. Well, Reese is just cold. I don't think coming off the bench bothers him. He's the, you know, the reigning Pac-12 six man of the year. So he's you know, had his whole college career coming off the bench. So I don't think that really bothers him. I just think he's just going through a cold streak. And, you know, the only way to get out of those cold streaks is just to keep shooting. And eventually the shots will fall and you'll shoot your way out of it. And I think that's pretty much what Dutch's message is that, you know, look, you know, you didn't make any shots last night, but don't worry about it. That was last night. You know, tonight, just go out there and keep shooting. You're going to, they're going to go in eventually. Shooters shoot, man. Shooters shoot. Yep. And if you're in a slump, you know, you just got to keep shooting. And that's the thing is you can't have a situation where these guys become hesitant, which I have seen, especially with Micah Parrish, where he's afraid to shoot the ball. You can't be afraid to shoot the ball. You got to shoot the ball like you know it's going to go in. And tonight, they're going to need at least one of those guys to 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 have a, not a breakout game, but just like a solid game. Because if 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 tonight both of those players do exactly what they did versus UNLV, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Then you're then you're asking Jane Ledee, who's very much capable of doing it, to have another thirty four and sixteen night. You know, you're going to have to ask him to go above and beyond. And without any help, 
right? And and especially going up against great Osibor, that matchup right there could cancel it out. And it's what the others do in the game. Like great Osibor could have the same line that he had against Fresno State. Jalen Ledee could have the same line he had against UNLV. Okay, that pretty much cancels each other out. You're going to need the others to step up tonight against Utah State. And I think one of Micah Parrish or Reese, Reese Waters needs to kind of have a, a good game. They just do. Or else it's going to be very tough tonight uh, against Utah State. You know, somebody needs to just step up, like you said, besides Butler. You know, Tremel was hitting his threes yesterday. So if he keeps his hot shooting going, that could help. Um, it's it's going to be a barn burner tonight. It's one of those games I kind of told Fletch that I think if we made it through yesterday that we were going to make it to Saturday. So, but, you know, like I said, we got to go through the number one seed. And, you know, it's kind of a, a revenge game because we lost to them. We did lose to them once, didn't we? They lost to them in the in the tournament. No, in the regular season. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. In the regular, they lost on the road to Utah State, and then they beat them at home by double digits. Okay. So, um, and you look at the rest of the bracket in the Mountain West Conference tournament. Boise State lost last night. Nevada lost last night. Well, it's, you're gonna get Colorado State or uh, stupid Mashburn's kid and a. Eddie House's kid. Oh, New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico. You know, and everyone's favorite players. Right. The the number, what is it? Two, three, and four seeds are all out of the Mountain West Conference tournament right now. You have a six seed, a seven seed, a five seed, and a one seed. That just shows you how good the Mountain West Conference has been this year. How close everybody has been in the Mountain West Conference tournament. New Mexico, uh, their team that's on the bubble. They're they're kind of looking at this probably as a situation where, hey, we need if we don't want to worry, we need to win the Mount West Conference tournament. And if they want it, would anybody be surprised? Would if 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 Colorado State won it, would anybody be surprised? You know, like San Diego State wins it, would anybody be surprised? Like, no, like that is what has made this conference so good this year, is that with about five or six teams, you're sitting to yourself saying, Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that team won the regular season title. I wouldn't be surprised if that team won the conference tournament title. That's how good they are. And tonight, you know, going up against the uh, the the winner of the regular season, it would have been nice if this was a uh, championship game because it definitely has all the makings of a championship game with the players, the teams, all of it. The little, the rivalry that the, these two teams have over the last couple of years, it makes for that could be a Mountain West Conference tournament championship game, but it's not. It's a semifinal game, and the winner tonight will go on to the Mount West Conference Tournament Championship in Las Vegas on Saturday. All right, so moving over to the Padres. And they're in Seoul, Korea. They are officially there. The one player that is not there is Dylan Cease. I don't know when he is flying out. I'm not quite sure. Um, but he was at Peoria the other day maybe throwing a bullpen or just thrown on the side field or whatever, but he's going to Korea. It's official. And we have the travel roster Brent for mm. the Seoul Korea 31 man roster. And there's really not many surprises here. Honestly, I think the only surprise um, would be maybe Tyler Wade, but you look at it and Ooh. Manny, exactly. Manny Machado is not going to be playing third base. So they need another infielder. And then Brett Sullivan made the trip. He's the, like the third emergency catcher. But looking at the roster, I think we can pretty much see what the Padres opening day 20-man roster or 26-man roster will be. Um, and I, do they have holes still? Absolutely. They still have some big-time holes. But this is what they're going to go into the season with. And with Dylan Cease on the roster now in this rotation... You do feel better about things, but you also know that there's still margin for error isn't as as big as you would want because you don't have a DH, you don't have a left fielder, first base is still an issue, center fields as a 20-year-old rookie. Um, the back end of the bullpen, I, I've said it this year, the back end of this bullpen and the bullpen as, as a whole, I think could it be a really good bullpen this year. That's dependent on if they perform. If Robert Suarez is going to look like last year's Robert Suarez, that's a problem. We have some big-time problems. 
But if Robert Suarez is going to be 2022 version of Robert Suarez, and you tap on 36 saves to that, then you feel really good about the bullpen. But uh, the, the rosters, the roster is set. The roster is set just with uh, Dylan Cease being added to it. He will be in Korea. And, you know, I've seen a lot lately, and we've talked about this, like the 2022, and, and I heard Darren talk about earlier today, the 2022 roster compared to this roster, it's very comparable. Okay. I mean, I could, I could see your argument. I could definitely see your argument. That was all contingent on pretty much the big guys and the main pieces all staying healthy. Like you need to have Darvish Musgrove pitch like 2022. You need to have Michael King, Dylan Cease, one of those guys step up and take the, the Blake Snell role. And then if that happens, you're going to need like a, an MVP type of year out of Manny Machado. You're going to need bounce back years from Bogarts and Tatis. And even with all that, you still have pretty big holes still to fill that I don't even know if they will fill. Like Tommy Pham's still out there. I know I, AJ, if, if if you're truly, you know, going into this year thinking that your job's on the line and you made the Dylan Cease trade because of that, wouldn't you think that you would just, and like, okay, I'm just going to go all in. I'm just going to, after making this move for Dylan Cease, where I gave up a bunch of prospects, screw it. Let's just go all in because I know that my job is probably on the line. And by doing that, that would mean you'd have to sign Tommy Pham, which would kind of round out the edges. Not saying it would fill every hole, not saying that this team is perfect by any stretch if they happen to sign Tommy Pham, but at least you give yourself a better chance to, you know, keep your job if you sign Tommy Pham rather than relying on a guy like Jerkson Profar and, um, Jose Zokar and whoever else you're going to put in the outfield and, you know, getting another professional major league bat in that lineup. It almost feels like he's just waiting to see what happens in Korea before he makes another move to be like, whoa, well, well, you know, let's see how those two, you know, actual games that count in Korea go. Maybe, you know, if it goes better than expected, maybe we don't really need Tommy fam. Maybe we it's only two we, games. I mean, they, well, well, I, I know, but you know, instead of just, panicking maybe he's gonna go oh well, well we'll just ride it out let's just wait and you know we'll make moves after korea well he, i mean yeah i can see that like making a move when they, when they actually have a game time situations that actually matter true i games. don't know how much you're gonna really get out of korea like if they lose two games or win two games if you're really if you if you win two games i don't think they're gonna be sitting there saying oh, we're good we're winning 95 games this year no no but i i think they'll take those two games as more of a like a serious account of their what talent they have opposed to like going up against a ball of... dudes in Peoria. True. Yeah. We, you like, like we've been to... talking about like uh, uh, Jack, if he hits against the Dodgers, you know, a team, like I said, opposed to, you know, Dodgers, a ballers that he's doing in spring training. So true. Uh, and I get that. I, and I understand like, it's now that it's, it's the big boys. It's the big leagues. It, this is, this is the time where yeah, you're not going to be number facing. 98s aren't going to be coming on the mound anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be facing some, uh, top end talent. How are you going to react to when you start to struggle? How are you going to react to when they start finding a weakness and they exploit it? How, how are you going to, you know, react to everything that will be thrown your way now that you're in the big leagues, Jackson Merrill, Graham Pauly. You know, Tyler Wade, like how, how are they going to respond? Um, it's going to be fascinating to see now again, they, they aren't the end all be all to this season, but they could be put in roles where they're going to be playing a lot. And what if Jackson Merrill has a situation where in the first couple weeks here, he's, it feels like every time he's at the, at the plate in the middle of the game, He's in a big time spot to try to drive in runs. And, he, and, and then we're going to see, all right, is he going to come through? And if he doesn't, then it's like, well, Jackson Merrill, if he just got a base hit or did this or did that, could have changed the entirety of the game. And that's going to be fascinating to watch to see how he responds to everything that's thrown his way in the big leagues. All right, coming up, Kevin AC, he'll join us from Seoul, South Korea. David J. Mad Friars will talk to us in the 5 p.m. hour. John's going to probably join us around four-ish. We'll see when he gets all set up and everything courtside 
in Las Vegas. But coming up next. Dude, John's going to be waiting outside for that door to open. Oh, I like, know. He's got U2 tickets or something. And he's going to be like bags in hand, ready to go. It's going to be like Black Friday. He's just going to run, run over people. Run in. I need to set up for John and Jim. I need to set up for John and Jim. Even though I don't think that's what he'd be doing. He's like, I'll let Jim just go another half hour or so. But coming up next, it, it is something I feel like can be discussed. And we're going to discuss it. And that is the 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 real real possibility. If if King, Cease, Musgrove, and Darvish all stay healthy. That's a big if. They all stay healthy. Could this be one of the best rotations in baseball? We'll go over that and go over all the rotations that I think could be up there coming up next. All right, coming up next, we'll discuss if the Padres rotation is fully healthy this year, could they be the best in baseball? We'll talk about that coming up next.
All right, this update is brought to you by the San Diego Rescue Mission. Aztecs yesterday in their opening round game in the quarterfinals versus UNLV went to overtime, but they beat UNLV to move on to take on Utah State in the semis later tonight, 6.30 tip-off, 6 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. The Padres' spring breakout game today between the Mariners was canceled due to rain. It was rescheduled for later this month. And NFL news of the day, Aaron Donald. He announced his retirement after 10 seasons with the Rams. Eight of those years, he was an All-Pro. He won a Super Bowl. Next stop for him will be the Hall of Fame in 2029. Easter is the season of hope. Please help the San Diego Rescue Mission. Hope to hungry and homeless neighbors this Easter. Just $2.72 provides one Easter holiday meal. Donate now at sdrescue.org. The rescue mission is where hungrier ends and hope begins. All right, back here on John and Jim on a Friday. John will join us shortly from Las Vegas. for open up for him in about five minutes. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear him. On like five years long, yeah. You know, when he retired, well, sorry, JJ Watt, I still love you, but come on. I think JJ Watt was really good. I know, but then he just got scared and player job. There's nothing for him to accomplish. Oh yeah, no. Rookie player of the year, defensive player of the year, Super Bowl, All Pro. Uh, I, I mean, the the discussion for him once his time comes up for the Hall of Fame will be very short. Like it will oh, yeah, be, I, I would say, less than thirty seconds. Yeah, it, he's not going to be one of those guys to where it's like, oh wow, there there won't be an Antonio Gates situation that happens to where everyone just thinks he's going to be a first ballot. And yeah. Like, oh, he didn't make it. It's like, no, he's going to be unanimous. And and the the position he plays too. I mean, that's not a position of like. You're not getting hit a lot. I mean, you're getting hit every single play. Oh, yeah. And not only are you getting hit, hit every single play, you're doubled and triple teamed because you're the best defensive lineman in, in the entire NFL. So the uh, the class of 2029, Brent, it's going to look pretty good. You got oh, yeah. Jason Kelsey. You got Aaron Donald right now. You probably Fletcher Cox, maybe. I don't know. He Ooh. retired with the, the Eagles. but And again, there's other players that I'm sure like, Ha- will still be on the ballot that could go in that time as well. But those two guys, the uh, Jason Kelsey and Aaron Donald, pretty good one, two to go oh, in the yeah. hall of fame together. Oh yeah. Pretty good one, two there. Okay. So before the break, I, I tease like, okay, is the, do the Padres have the best rotation in baseball? If fully healthy. And you might think to yourself, Jim, you're freaking crazy. What are you talking about? Dylan Cease, Like he's a really good pitcher, but he's not, you know, the best pitcher in baseball. It's not like they got a prime Justin Verlander or a prime Max Scherzer on the team. Well, Dylan Cease, I mean, this 2022 was really good, really good. And he sh- probably should have won the Cy Young that year. And last year, you could, you know, say whatever you want about last year. It was not a good year as far as uh, ERA goes and, and it was a high four ERA, but he did lead the league in starts. And he gave you 177 innings pitched and he gave you over 200 strikeouts. And he's a guy that his stuff plays. Like if he just gets a little tweaking with Ruben Niebla, you could see a Dylan Cease 2022 version this upcoming year with the Padres. So with that being said, let's just, let's just go out there and say this. All right. Musgrove Darvish, they're healthy for the entire season. They're, they, they might not put up their 2022 numbers, but they still give you solid, solid years. They both give you around 30 starts. Joe and you give you like 170 plus innings pitched. Dylan Cease, that's that's just say he reverts back to closest closer to his 2022 form than his 2023 form. Maybe not to the level of what he was doing in 2022, but let's just say that he finds his slider because I, I was reading a bunch of th- uh, stuff and listening to a bunch of podcasts where the reason why last year was such a struggle for him was he didn't have a slide. His slider was not as good as it was in 2022. And he was also on a really crappy team with a really bad defense. 
and maybe there was a motivation problem there, or there was just a, Hey, like this team sucks. I don't know what the issue was like fully with him last year, but his slider was not as good as it was in 2022. So let's just say, all right, his slider gets back to his 2022 form and he puts together an all-star year. Maybe not Cy Young, but he gives you an ERA under three. doesn't have to be 2.2 like it was in 2022, but let's just say that he gives you like a two, two nine ERA. All right. And then Michael King, let's say he makes that jump and gives you a comparable year to what Michael Walker had last year, but around 150 innings. To me, if those things happen, again, big ifs. Those are those are very lofty ifs, right? Very lofty goals. But it's not out of the realm of possibility is why I'm saying it. It's not something that I feel like is a complete pipe dream for everything that I just said there. Would you agree, Brent? Like, yeah. what, like what part of that to me you're like no way that's ever that's no way that's gonna happen them staying healthy <laughs> honestly I, I, I know that, I, that's that's my biggest thing is just them staying healthy well okay I, and I don't disagree and, with you, know, you and it doesn't even just mean like on the field you know we have just fluke things like you know last year when Joe dropped the kettlebell on his foot or whatever I know, and, I know. you know it's just stuff like that. Right. And and I get it. I, I agree with you. The health is something that I, I if at the end of the year you told me all four of those guys have 30 plus starts, I'd be kind of shocked. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa, okay. I don't know about that one. Dude, if you told me all those guys had 30 plus starts, then I would think that we won the division or something. Like they at least won like 90 games. Like yeah, they, those least. guys made all 30 starts. What? But just hear me out. Okay. And now you look at the rest of baseball, and I I, I have Five teams here, excuse me, four teams. All right. No, five teams, five teams. And I would say that these five teams, you could argue their rotation is top of baseball. All right. First up, Arizona. Arizona, they added Eduardo Rodriguez from the Tigers with Zach Gowan and Merrill Kelly and Brandon Fat. I think that's how you say his last name. They went to the World Series with that rotation without Eduardo Rodriguez. So, if Merrill Kelly and and Zach Gallon and Eduardo Rodriguez, that's a pretty good one, two, three. All right. In your own division. Then we're looking at a team that's not in their division, but it's still in baseball. The Houston Astros with Justin Verlander, Framber Valdez, Kristen Javier, Lance McCullers, Luis Garcia. Like they have a pretty good rotation, wouldn't you say? <laughs> they have a pretty good rotation in baseball. Then the Phillies in the and then in the NL East here, Zach Wheeler. Aaron Nola, Ranger Suarez, Taiwan Walker. That's still, I would say, a a top five-ish, top 10-ish rotation in baseball. The Braves, you could argue, have the best rotation in baseball with Max Fried, Spencer Strider, Charlie Morton, Chris Sale. That's pretty good. And then the Doyers with Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Uh, They picked up some people. Tyler Glass now, James Paxton. Walker Bueller when he gets healthy and returns. Um, and then you have Clayton Kershaw, which probably is not going to return until middle or late this upcoming year. And the Padres with Johnny Brito, Michael King, Dylan Cease, Joe Musgrove, you Darvish. And then if you want to put Matt Waldron in the mix, you can. I'm not saying that they're the best rotation in baseball because I don't think they like definitively are. But I'll put them in the hat. I'll put them in the mix. If you want to have all the teams I just named and with all the players, and you want to put the Padres in that mix to contend for potentially best rotation in baseball, at the end of the year, we'll see. But as of right now, I'll throw them in the mix. I'll throw them in the mix to be in the conversation for best rotation in baseball if the things I said, most importantly, health happens. I think if they stay healthy, they could be a top 10 you know, I I don't think there'd be top five. I don't think, but I think if they stay healthy, I think they could easily be top ten in the well, league. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the 2022 rotation was a top five rotation in baseball, and you didn't have Michael King, and you didn't have maybe a, you know Johnny Brito. You had yeah, I know, but now we Clevenger did, and Manaya. Yeah, but we don't have the Cy Young winner either, and. I know, but Blake Snell was not Cy Young in 2022. Yeah, that's true. My, uh, Joe Musgrove was all star, an all-star in 2022, and you Darvish put up a really good season in 2022. My point is, with this rotation, 
if they're healthy. Like that's the key to 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 staying in it. You know, I'm not going to go on the radio here and say that they're 100% going to make the postseason. But I will say if they if that rotation stays healthy, they're I, there's nothing in my mind that would say like they're not going to at least be in the in the hunt in the mix for a playoff spot. Now, if these players get injured and they have, you know, then all the things are off the table. But as of right now, if you, if you told me that the, the, those four guys that I mentioned are healthy, like, yeah, I think they're going to be in the mix for the postseason. 85 wins, 86 wins. Like, yeah, I'll take your chance. I'll take my chances. A lot of things could happen. The, the injuries, the lineup could not be good because there's still a lot of holes. Jackson Merrill could suck. You know, like Xander Bogart's kind of a bad it can happen. But if you have the pitching and the pitching stays healthy, you could be in it. Because the 2022 team, a lot of people were comparing the lineups and saying, oh, this team's lineup's better. That team did not have a good lineup for a majority of that season. They won 89 games. You know why they won 89 games? They had really good pitching. And this team could have really good pitching too if they stay healthy. All right, coming up next, I just... What the hell is AJ Brzezinski talking about? I don't understand. We'll hear from him coming up next.
All right. I don't think AJ Brzezinski understands like how trades work. We'll talk about that and hear from him coming up next. All right, back here on John and Jim Aztecs. We're taking on Utah State tonight, 6.30 in Las Vegas. We have confirmation from John. He is in the building. He is currently setting up courtside. We'll see if we get him on at the top of the hour. Probably depends if he's done with his acai bowl. There, there, there is they a, sell them in Vegas? There is a lot happening at 4 p.m. right here on John and Jim. One, got to get John on from Las Vegas courtside. And two, we got to connect with Kevin Acey in Seoul, South Korea. Like the ace man, the ace man. I mean, it'd be one thing if we just had one of those that we have to work on, but Brent, you got a lot, you got a lot on your shoulders here at the top of the hour here with a brick situation with John and then an international call on Kevin Acey's cell phone. <laughs> I'm more worried about the international call on Kevin's cell phone. He claims and he claims to to John and I that his phone is working really good. So we will see. But Kevin is scheduled to join us from Seoul, South Korea. I believe is it's... It, am, am I going to get the weird international dial tone maybe. thing? Like at the beginning of that Space Hog song? Maybe. Now, the time in Korea is... I, I could be wrong I here. I think there's 16 hours ahead. I like think that. it's Saturday morning at... It would be Saturday morning at 8 a.m. I'm pretty sure. Brent's checking it right now. What time is it in Seoul, South Korea? It is 7.49 in the morning. So it will be 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. Yeah, there's 16 hours ahead of us. Okay. So that's not a bad time. I was worried that if we asked Kevin to come on at like 4, it would have been like 4 a.m. in Seoul, South Korea. But 8 a.m., that's actually not a bad time. It's uh, just a day ahead of us. And uh, so we'll get Kevin on at 4. And then David J., we were going to talk about this breakout game along with the trade for Dylan Cease, but the breakout game today for the Padres got canceled. So we'll just be talking about the Dylan Cease trade, the prospects that went to the White Sox, also his thoughts on Jackson Merrill getting the starting job in center field. He, he's going to be the starter. He's got a number. 
It's number three. I like the jersey a lot. I would, I love the number three, by the way. Th- three is like a really good number in my book. So he's got his big league number. He's going to be in center field on opening day next uh, next Wednesday, or next Wednesday, Thursday for uh, Korea, for the Padres. And uh, we'll get David J's thoughts there. And, and real quick before we get to freaking whatever AJ Brzezinski was trying to talk about, I see a lot of people in the chat talking about I'm like ridiculous for even saying that the Padres could potentially have a top five rotation in baseball if they stay healthy. Yes, I know. The, it's with all sports. The if healthy part is always something that you can never bank on. Never. But guess what they are right now, Brent? They're healthy. So going into the season, I feel pretty good about this rotation. I really do. I know Dylan Cease, if you're just looking at the numbers on paper, and if you're just looking at his ERA the last three years, you're like, this guy's not that great. But you got to dive deeper into the numbers. You have to dive deeper. And, and if you listen to people in Chicago that have watched Dylan Cease for the last five years, especially the last three, they say that this guy is, is a frontline starter. He has ace stuff. So that's what I'm going with. I'm going with what they say. I'm going with looking at the advanced stats. I'm going with his strikeout rate. I'm going with his uh, how many swings and misses he's had over the last three years, which is leads the league in baseball. Like I'm going with that. He can throw 101. I'm going with that. His slider, if it reverts back to 2022 slider is an unhittable pitch. Like that's what I'm banking on. And oh, by the way, he's getting with Ruben Niebla as well. So I'll take those. I'll take my chances. And I'll say this Padres rotation right now on paper has the potential to be a top five in baseball, maybe top 10. Okay. Top you know, seven, eight in baseball, but still, if you get a, a rotation that's seventh or eighth in baseball, like that's, that's good enough for me. It's all you can ask. Top 10 rotation in baseball. All right. AJ Przinsky. Just what were you talking about, bro? Listen to what his reaction was to this Dylan Cease trade. Foul territory crew, man, a crazy, crazy trade today. As you can see behind me right there, Petco Park. What what are the Padres doing? I don't get it. They give up Soto. They cut payroll. They're not bringing back Snell. And they go out and trade some of their best prospects and some of their best relievers for Dylan Cease. I'm happy for the White Sox. I'm happy they made a move. I hope it was the best move for Chris Getz and the White Sox gang. But, man, what are the Padres doing? I just don't understand why they would make this move. Again, I'm happy for the White Sox. Does Dylan Cease join the Padres in Korea and pitch one of those two games? Probably not. So they lose two games. Man, it's going to be awkward for him. His team's in Korea. He's going to be in Arizona working out by himself while the rest of his team fights against the Dodgers in Korea. Well, congratulations, Dylan Cease, on going to the Padres. But Padres, Padres fans, thoughts? Because I am super confused by this move. Okay, AJ, um, because you're super confused, let me explain it for you. The Padres are trying to win baseball games right now in 2024. Dylan Cease helps them win baseball games in 2024. That is why the Padres traded for a starting pitcher right now. If you don't understand why they traded for Dylan Cease, you don't know you're an idiot, you don't know baseball. I mean, it's like right, Brent? Am I am I like what is he talking about? Well, I don't know what the Padres are doing. They're trying to win, idiot. My thing that sticks out in that little rant is who he wasn't going to pitch in Korea anyway. So no. who cares if he doesn't go, you know, it's not like when they picked him up that he automatically was going to become their number one starter. He wasn't going to pitch in Korea anyways. And it's not like he's some, you know, 19 year old rookie. You know, he, it's not like he's Ethan Salas or something to where, you know, he, it, it, might, it might affect him mentally because, Oh, everyone else is over in Korea having fun playing the Dodgers. And I'm here in Arizona. It's like, no, he's just gonna, he's a pro. He'll, you know, deal with it for a week and just move on. Like, what do you expect them to do? I mean, AJ Preller is pretty much on the hot seat this year. This team has, big time contracts in their prime. Do you just want them to not do anything? Like that's we, what it seemed like he wanted. Did you did you not want the Padres to do anything? I mean, we've been sitting here for the last three months saying, hey, Padres, do something. Like, and you just don't understand why they traded for one of the top 10, 15 pitchers in baseball. Like, what I don't get it. Okay. What? You're an idiot and you don't know baseball. Uh, coming up next, Kevin Acey and John Schaefer 
will be joining the show. We'll see if we can get all of us on at one time. One from Seoul, Korea, one from Las Vegas, one here in San Diego with me. Coming up next. Oops. I'm in. Chair, I'm in StreamYard. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. What the hell is going on with this thing? Hold this up. Bum, bum, bum. 
Oh, my mic is hot. What's up, guys? <laughs> That's because I haven't muted my mic. I'm just going to talk to everyone in the YouTube chat. What's up, guys? <laughs> I know. I'm in Vegas. You'll see me in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Free super chat. I'm just talking to you guys. Jim, I unmuted myself. All right, I'll mute myself. We'll be back in a second, guys. All right, this update is brought to you by the San Diego Rescue Mission. San Diego State Aztecs last night, or yesterday afternoon, excuse me, beat UNLV in overtime thanks to a massive game by Jaden Ledee. Aztecs now move on to the semifinals of the Mount West Conference Tournament later tonight as they'll take on Utah State. 6.30 tip-off, 6 p.m. pregame right here on San Diego Sports 760. The Padres spring breakout game today between the Mariners and was canceled due to rain. It's been rescheduled for March 23rd in Peoria. And NFL news of the day, Aaron Donald announced his retirement. Today, 10 seasons, eight all-pro years, one Super Bowl. Next stop for him will be the Hall of Fame in 2029. Easter is the season of hope. Please help the San Diego Rescue Mission bring hope to hungry and homeless neighbors this Easter. Just $2.72 provides one Easter holiday meal. Donate now at sdrescue.org. The rescue mission is where hunger ends and hope begins. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? Hour two, John and Jim, just like that, Jim. I just show up unannounced. Actually, I kind of did announce it. Uh, Kevin AC is going to join us in a moment. So let me just set this up for 60 seconds, Jim. Um, so the building is not technically open until right now, but I pulled some strings. Oh, but New Mexico was VIP. I, I, but New Mexico was practicing and there was like a rule in college basketball. A closed practice is a closed practice. Like I'm not going to be able to get around that. Right. But the practice ended at three 35. So I rolled in at three 40 and set the stuff up and he, look, you can see me on YouTube. I'm wow. on the Max Center. In I know Las Vegas, Nevada. you have, and I'm going to totally jinx this right now. You have amazing connection. Dude, don't say that. Are you saying <laughs> on internet or, or, or the equipment? I'll just say uh, equipment-wise. You're such an idiot. <laughs> I like to say that. I know, I know, I know. But I'm happy you showed up. Um, pretty big game tonight, John. Oh, I just cut my head off. Oh, uh, it's a... not literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're off to a really, really good start to the show. Um, it, it is. I heard, by the way, I really enjoyed, and I'm not just saying this because I would tell you if I thought it sucked. Um, I really enjoyed the first segment of the show. I was listening to you guys driving over in an Uber. and um, So you're the one person that liked it. I was really... Why? Were people ripping you? I don't know. I'm just know. probably in the chat. I, I wasn't able to see because I was, you know, yeah, just talking. Yeah. No, I mean, you bring up good points. And, you know, I love that you played uh, our producer, Darnay Tripp Sound from Dutch. Yeah, thanks, game, Darnay. Um, talking about how tonight's going to be a big night for both um, like a parish and race waters, yeah. right? Because why not? Because anything that's happened previously has already happened and you've got here. And I think, and, and Brennan, let us know we have Kevin, um, or do we have Kevin? We have him. We have Kevin. All yeah. right. We'll talk more about it in a moment. Let's get to this. All right, Kevin AC is our Padres insider. I think this is a first for us, Kevin. Obviously, you're in South Korea. That makes it a first. I'm at the Mountain West Championship at the Thomas and Mack Center. <laughs> Jim is at our San Diego Sports 760 studios. And you are in Seoul, South Korea, which is incredible. It's 8 a.m., I believe, on Saturday morning. First and foremost, we'll, we'll get to the Padres. But how was the travel for you, uh, making the travel 16 time zones and getting to Korea within the last day or two? Really not bad at all. Just not. It's you. You prepare for it. Uh, you you think it's going to be terrible, and uh, so that that uh, your expectations uh, make it uh, what it is to some extent. My expectations were ah, it's going to be rough because I've been to Asia before, and it, it can be rough. Now going back, that'll be another thing, and that's something that I've talked about with the team. Like these are the guys that gotta you know hit the ground running pretty much when they get back, and uh, going east uh, is always more difficult. 
Yeah, you know, it's so funny. We spent all offseason, Kevin, and you've written about it, and you covered the team this spring, obviously, as you always do, and it was, quote-unquote, quiet. It just was. And I guess it's almost not surprising and surprising that the move they make is actually on the day they leave for Korea. And we had talked last week about all the challenges logistically for the team and how much time and effort goes into that and making sure you stay healthy here. Now that they've acquired Dylan Cease, what's gone into the pro- – what is the plan for him, I guess, in Korea? Because, right, he's traveled separately. You'll have the update. Yeah. I don't know if he has arrived, but yeah. what's the plan for Cease once he arrives, uh, arrives in Korea? And will he be uh, on the active roster for these first two games? Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know about the active roster. I doubt it. I don't see a reason why. Okay. Um, I don't think you would pitch Dylan Cease in relief. But that's something I look forward to uh, to finding out today. Um, I from from the, under, the understanding that I have is get him around Ruben Diabla, get Ruben around him, uh, and you know get him a part of the team. Uh, but let him throw here, uh, and so I think that that is uh, the direction they they have so much time for for really for everyone except Joe Musgrove and you and you Darvish. Uh, they have so much time. They basically get to reset after Korea. And with this trade, Kevin, you know, they gave up a lot from a prospect ranking standpoint. And, you know, this feels like it's one of those moves that kind of had to be made. And it also is a move from AJ Preller's standpoint of like, you know, a go for it move. Is that how they are approaching this is like, we're going for it here. And this guy we feel like could potentially put us over the top, maybe not to win the division, but Hey, if we're struggling to probably get to 85 wins with the roster we have now, we feel more comfortable with this. I think that it, your, your last point there is, is what it is. I, to have Dylan Cease, you now have three starters. I don't know that, that he is going to give you what Blake Snell gave you last year, but you certainly hope that Joe Musgrove and you Darvish are healthy and give you more than what they gave last year. So I think you have a top three that you can at least go into the season saying, hey, this is as good or better than what we had last season. And we like Michael King a lot. And we think we got a bunch of guys we can run through the number five spot, just like we thought we had a bunch of guys we could run through the four and five spot. So, like, should have been a better team last year with the starting pitching we have. So we feel like we've got good starting pitching. Boom. You know, here we go again. They're kind of running it back. Uh, obviously, without Juan Soto, Josh Hader, right. or Blake Snell, or Michael Waka, <laughs> um, yeah. Seth Lugo. But, like, in a sense, it's like, hey, this is the formula that has worked for us the last two years, right? And here we go again. I think, yeah, it's this interesting deal, like, right? Like, it had to be made. And and that's sort of like the, the take on it. Well, yeah. I mean, now you look at it, you go, yeah, it had to be made because it made them theoretically we're always operating in theory people love names people love trades yeah like we don't learn from all the trades that have happened <laughs> yeah um but but like theoretically this made them better and it it's like okay yeah this makes sense now they still have some other situations uh that either are gonna work out for them or aren't in the outfield um and you know well, we'll see but i i do think that this 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 is something that gave them a lot more comfort. Kevin Ace is our Padres insider. He's joining us from Korea, where the Padres will play the Dodgers on March 20th and 21st at 3 in the morning Pacific time. He's covering, of course, that series. He's our Padres insider. Um, are, do you have a feel for the reaction around baseball in terms of what the Padres did give up, though? Because obviously, uh, like Jim mentioned, first of all, to get something, you have to give something. So both sides are you know, I, ideally getting what they prefer. The Padres a trade for now. The White Sox a trade for their future. Um, it, was there is there one piece that is maybe the most significant quote unquote loss for the Padres that they traded away? Is it Thorpe? Is it Iriarte? Is it the young outfield prospect? How is this seen? I think people, first off, like for the most part, there's this understanding by people that are like inside the game is like, this is what it takes. And Hey, they got Dylan Cease. Like, you know, this was, this was a, not a coup, but like, this was a big deal for the Padres who are, have this, this window and, and, and are, you know, a pretty good team uh, that, that just theoretically got better. Now the, the split, I was not split, like, you know, prospects are what are prospects. They're, they're like, the, it's in the word itself, right? It's like potential is another, is a synonym, synonym for it. There's two things. Iriarte, 
like, man, people were like beside themselves about Iriarty inside the organization, outside the organization. And yeah, you, you would go to minor league games and there would be all sorts of scouts. I mean, you know, I'm not exactly sure where they were from. Some of them, some of them I was, but like, you know, there were scouts from mi- numerous teams watching. Um, but the other one is this wild card of Zabala. Um, you know, this guy, first part of last season is like, wow, you see what he's doing at 18 years old or however it was at, at the time. Um, and, oh, okay, well, another thing that is the nature of prospects, like he's young and whatever, flaky or, or, or whatever. Like there's questions about like how much is he actually going to put into this. But like now he's got a chance in another organization to, to be an incredible player. I mean, you you may have just, traded away three future all-stars is the uh, perception. However, a long way to go to get to those future all-stars. And the Padres just got a guy who is a difference maker. Yeah. And the the difference also is like the guy that they traded for could be an all-star as well. And he could be in the Cy Young conversation right now, not in two or three years, but right now. Here's something. And I put it in my, um, it's in my kind of season preview. And it doesn't mean anything because like Yamamoto and, and Otani are on the Dodgers with, uh, you know, uh, Betts and Freeman and, and Will Smith. But in terms of just the rankings, this is true. Like the Padres are the only team in baseball to have three position players and three starting pitchers ranked in the top 25 in war, huh. in, in, in F war in the past, over the past five seasons. Now, okay. Whatever. Like, I mean, you know, how long is, uh, well, Tani's been around all those times. Yamamoto has not, but just, and look, I'll take, uh, I'll take Wheeler and Nola. They're really good. You got Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, JT Real Muto. I mean, I'm not, I'm, all I'm saying is the Padres got some pretty good players. Okay. Yeah, they do. It's the, it's the <laughs> other holes they have that are, are going to be a, go. a little bit of an issue, especially with left field and DH and, you know, a complete unknown with Jackson Merrill, even though they believe in him a lot. And with that being said, Kevin, are they done? Are are they done making moves here? Or is this, you know, going to be a, a, like, Hey, we'll see what we got for the first couple of months and go from there. You know, I've got two answers for that. Um, and I want to address the, the holes and all that stuff that I just gave you kind of an amen to. I want to make sure we address that. But my answer to that is like, as I've been mentioning here, like Tommy Pham, gets talked about too much to not be like a real possibility. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if he's waiting for the Padres uh, in San Diego. Now Mm. that I got nothing new on, but it's just that he's been talked about too much. Okay. Mm. Um, And then I can also see them like they've also talked about (laughs) waiting till the trade deadline. And, And this sort of relates to the point I wanted to make about the holes and all that. I still believe, and I believe the Padres believe, That for whatever holes they have, like they had holes last year too. Like people didn't want to talk about it, but like they had holes last year too. Maybe not as big as this. I don't know. But like, you know, they had holes. It is still so important how the big three do. I I, I don't care what holes you have. Like if Manny Machado, Manny Machado has carried this team for large portions of the past four years and it's been a pretty successful four years all in all there have been a you know there was a collapse in 21 and last year you know they for like mind-boggling reasons they they didn't take advantage of what they had but like it's been a pretty successful in Padres terms four years and Manny Machado has carried this team and I still believe that that is something that has not has to be but like it's pretty close to, like being mandatory for 2024 that Manny Machado has got to play up to, you know, what his levels are and Tatis and Bogarts, like they can make up for a lot. There's a reason you pay those guys what you pay them. Kevin, I think it's really well said. Kevin Ace is our Padres insider. Here's my question, Kevin, on, on Manny in terms of when we're going to see him in the, in the field. It's not necessarily when we see him in the field, but Will we consistently see him in the field even when he gets there? Because you think about playing one game at third base, but like how long does it take until he's capable of playing back-to-back games at third base or three consecutive games? Is is there any feel for his timeline, A, of getting out there in the field, and then B, once he is in the field, is it going to be an every-other-day thing or how long until he's fully ramped up? 
I don't have clarity on that, but like the clarity I have is like the questions you're asking, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of what they've talked about. And uh, Manny doesn't, Manny's been real good this spring and, 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 and generally is, I've always said that. Like when you get through all the, the stuff, um, Manny gives great insightful answers until you want to talk about him and, and how his health and yeah. Hey, you know, God bless him. Right. Like he went on the IL last year for the first time in eight seasons. Like that works for him. Not, not addressing injuries, not thinking about him, just playing. So good for him. Um, I love that about him actually. So, um, but like, there's just not a lot of clarity on like, what are the concerns, but it certainly does seem to be basically what you've talked about, which is recovery, which is like, is it like, how much, how soon and how much do we push him? Um, the guy, like I said, was out there playing early in spring and he looked like it was any second <laughs> that he was going to be able to play third base. He was making some throws and then um, like 100% basically and Manny type throws from third base. Not a lot, but he was making them and then suddenly shut down for four or five days. Not like, like as in precautionary, not uh-oh, like but shut down nonetheless. Like, hey, we need to be careful. And th there was something that he just wasn't feeling right about. And since hitting is the most important thing, that's, you know, they're like, hey, we're going to stop this. And we're going to make sure he's okay. Now, he started throwing again, but I haven't seen. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. Um, so it feels like I haven't. You know, when you see the team every day and then you don't see him for three days, you're like, oh, it feels like a month. So maybe it happened yesterday. I don't know. But he, uh, he's throwing again, but I don't know what level he's at. So it, it's clearly my point is it's going to be a wait and see and, a, and like a let's be careful. And, hey, maybe we don't know. We'll have him play third base on April 14th or whatever, and we'll see how he feels on the 15th. And we go from there. Yeah, and, his, and like you said, his bat is clearly the yeah. most important thing here. And if he's hitting, and if he can hit and be that 2022 version of Manny Machado, which is what they need, then they can afford to take some time to put him in, in the infield here. Kevin, final one for me. Um, any surprises as far as the the travel roster went, the 31-man travel roster? Any surprises there? Because we can pretty much find the 26-man the opening day roster here. But yeah. as far as anybody else that may have made the trip, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Or players that didn't make the trip. Uh, anything surprised there for you? By the end, I think we all had a real good feel on it. You know, Jeremiah Estrada, I think, is uh, a relief pitcher who they claimed off the waivers. Uh, they had like five waiver picks in, in camp, and a few of them are here and sticking on the team. And he's one of them. And I think that's like could be like a Stephen Wilson replacement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I – but but we kind of knew that going in the last two or three days. It was like, you know, this guy's, you know, opened some eyes here. Um, you got down to it. Like, it was a real great competition. And I don't think you can make any arguments about um, who made the trip. Now, there's no guarantees just because it was a great competition um, that <laughs> those guys are going to be good in the major leagues. But I no, I think that uh, some guys stepped up, and I think that's the best case scenario for the Padres. It would have been sucked if everybody had a bad spring. Right. But Grand Pauly stepped up, man. Tyler Wade stepped up. Jackson Merrill certainly stepped up. So I think from that extent, they can feel real good about the guys they have. Now, the great part is starting um, Wednesday, and I guess it's Wednesday there too, <laughs> <laughs> starting Wednesday, 3 a.m. Wednesday Pacific time, uh, it counts. Now, then we get to take a week off. But like that, I'm really excited to see how this works out. Kevin, before you go real quickly, because I think you wrote about this, their traveling party of 31, they actually have to make roster decisions on while in Korea. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? There's a couple of players they may have to place on waivers before the season starts. I mean, how does that work out? You bring 31. Well, if they but... decide, yeah, if they yeah. decide those, they can easily avoid that by, okay. you know, uh, by keeping some guys. Because here's the deal. They have 31 now. They got to get down to 26 by 11 a.m. Korea time on Wednesday. And, but they can also then have of the five that are not going to be on the active roster, three can just be like in limbo so that, that, that them and the Dodgers aren't forced to make transactions before the rest of the league effectively being penalized by, you know, playing a week early. Sure. They can have three guys on the taxi squad. So let's say Pedro Avila is out of that option and he um, is gonna, not going to be on the active roster. They don't, they can just put him like in limbo on the taxi squad. They don't have to like, try and get him through waivers right away until the 28th on the 28th. They got to make questions about Patino, um, Avila, maybe someone else. Um, but they, they, they have 
time like the rest of the league does till the 28th to really do that. I said final question. I want to ask about the ballpark. Have you been in it? What's what's the what's this experience going to be like? What's this ballpark like? What what do you expect the atmosphere to be like? I've not been in it. I've been yeah. to it. It's very interesting. Um, I've been to all the ballparks in, in uh, the United States. I guess there's, there, there's it's some like it, but it was just funny to be there. Look, there's as many people here almost as in Los Angeles in a much smaller place, hmm. a much smaller geographical place. It's a busy place. And so there's this like little tiny dome, relatively speaking. It's got 16,000 seats. Um, and hustle and bustle going on outside of it as if the dome doesn't exist. Hmm. While there's all these workers getting ready for this big thing happening and there's pictures and flag, uh, you know, light post uh, flags for all the Padres and Dodgers and there's big posters of Buki Betts and Manny Machado and all these guys. Um, but you no, know, a bunch of people just rushing around doing their thing as if it wasn't really going on. Hmm. Um, I thought that was interesting just because like there are a lot of people here. Um, the inside, my understanding it is very intimate. They're right on top of you. It's going to be a crazy scene. Jerks and Profar said that, uh, and this guy plays winter ball, and he's played in the WBC a few times, and he said that Korea was like the most insane place that he's played uh, because of the noise and how passionate mm. they are. Um, it'll be interesting now since it's the Dodgers Padres. The Dodgers have long been the most popular team here, uh, but the Padres have Ha Sun Kim, Woo Suk Go. Um, and you know, they're gaining popularity here that the team is, so it'll be very interesting to see how, how it goes. My understanding it's karaoke when two Korean league teams play because every player has a walk-up song and the fans sing the walk-up song as the player is going up. Now, who's, um, you know, ha Sun Kim will be the only guy with a walk-up song, um, that, that, that Korean fans know. Um, but I, I look forward to it a, a lot. We're looking forward to it as well, Kevin. Obviously, kind of a once-in-a-lifetime baseball trip uh, for Major League Baseball to be in Korea. Enjoy your time. Uh, we will catch up when you get back, and thank you for taking time for us uh, in the morning to do this. Thanks, Kevin. Right on, guys. I hope your Saturday, when it gets there, is as nice as mine. <laughs> we do, too. You're living <laughs> in right. the future. <laughs> See you later. To put a bow on that, Jim, aren't time zones weird? Dude. <laughs> I mean, so weird. I mean, it's one thing in the US we're so used to it. All right, someone's three hours ahead, someone's three hours behind. 16 hours and to be like a day in front of someone. I mean, he's a full day in front of us. It's four in the afternoon. He's already awake for his Saturday. Right. That's he's just drinking weird. his coffee and yeah. getting ready to go out and enjoy the town and watch some practice and, you know, field in drills. And right. He's on it's it's the weekend for him. It's, it's the weekend. It's very weird. I, I was looking at some, um, you know, tweets like Scan and yeah. some of the players. I know Tatis was walking around like just on the streets, like no one was bothering him. Must really? have felt great for him. Like he was just sitting at a uh, like a local eatery establishment on the street, crazy, and just like eating food. And no, everyone just around him just eat like just totally normal. And uh, it is going to be as far as the travel goes and the body clock and all that stuff like, yeah, it's gonna be tough, but it looks pretty fun. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like yeah. it looks cool that if you're in Seoul, South Korea to experience that culture and experience everything that that place has to offer. Like, it looks like a fun experience. Dude, yeah. you, you brought up the food now, uh, you know how in between innings they do mud versus food. Yes. Yeah. They need to do mud versus Korean food and just Ooh, send him out should. to like the street markets and stuff. To I'm try sure food. Well, Padres.tv, I'm sure we'll have uh, something up their sleeve for all yeah, that. No doubt. Um, okay. On the other side, we have giveaways for you. We've got tickets to the Del Mar car show that we're going to give away on the other side. We're also going to get to the wrap coming up next. Uh, we're with you till 6 p.m. Then our countdown to tip off San Diego State. I'm inside the Thomas and Max Center. San Diego State, Utah State, huge game. Jim is not. You're right. Not bragging uh, or anything. Huge game tonight at 630 between the Aztecs and the Aggies. We'll get you set for that as well. But the wrap is on the other side. Plus, we're giving away Del Mar Car Show tickets. Stay with us on John and Jim.
All right. Hey, guys, it is Schaefer. I've been telling you for a long time about my friends over at Windmill Farms. Um, really, uh, you know, it's become a part of my weekly routine is what it's become. You know, it's as simple as that. And it should become a part of your weekly routine as well, especially if you're in the college area. I mean, I'm on San Diego State's campus all the time. So on my way onto campus or off campus, I'm swinging by Windmill Farms and you should, too. Um, especially because it's a great lunch spot. I think everyone's looking for a quick and easy lunch spot. You pick up a sandwich cart over there. You're getting your eighth sandwich for free. It, it's one thing to have a quick and another thing to make it healthy and affordable. And that's what Windmill Farms is able to provide. In addition to that, they're family owned. Trevor and his family, just great people over there. Like the customer service is second to none. They're friendly. They smile. Um, so it's just a really great spot. And again, you got the deli. Uh, it's a great spot on your way out of work for dinner as well. And, of course, all of your weekend needs, your grocery needs, they have them for you over at Wimmo Farms. Great organic farm fresh produce and meats. Amazing craft beer. The deli I've told you about, they're centrally located, again, right by San Diego State. Family owned for 20-plus years. Even if you don't live or work in the college area, no problem. You can find Windmill Farms on Instacart, have your groceries delivered directly to your doorstep as well. They've got a great offer. Should San Diego State win the tournament championship, you're going to get 20% off using promo code GOAZTECS. Should San Diego State win the tournament championship? Again, you heard me right. You're getting 20% off all orders over $50 or more by mentioning Go Aztecs at checkout. So they've got weekly specials at windmillfarmsmarket.com. Again, windmillfarmsmarket.com. And shop local, shop at Windmill Farms. All right, hey guys, imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free with no credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey guys, it is Schaefer Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. 
because homeowners are turning their home equity into cash and they're doing it almost instantly with Loan Pronto's AI based system. You can get approval and listen to this about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home, hundreds of thousands. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. Call now. Here's the number. 619-207-4336. Again, 619-207-4336 or LoanPronto.com. That's 619-207-4336. NMLS, 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. All right, this update is brought to you by San Diego Rescue Mission. Aztecs coming off their quarterfinal win over UNLV yesterday in overtime. They are advancing to the semis tonight to take on Utah State. 6.30 tip-off, 6 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here with John in Las Vegas on San Diego Sports 760. The Padres were supposed to have their spring breakout game today between the Mariners, but that was canceled Due to rain, it is now rescheduled for March 23rd. And NFL news of the day, Aaron Donald, he announced his retirement after 10 seasons with the Rams. Eight of those were all pro years. He won a Super Bowl, won a Defensive Player of the Year award. Next stop for him will be the Hall of Fame in 2029. Easter is the season of hope. Please help the San Diego Rescue Mission bring hope to hungry and homeless neighbors this Easter. Just $2 and 72 cents provides one Easter holiday meal. Donate now at sdrescue.org. The rescue mission is where hunger ends and hope begins. All right, John and Jim with you Friday afternoon against San Diego State, Utah State, Mount West semifinal coming up tonight, 641. That's right, you heard me. Up tonight, Mountain West semifinal action. These are two teams that have met in the Mountain West championship game four of the last five years. They'll meet tonight in the semifinal. This hour, you have a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Del Mar Car Show. So be listening for your chance to win those tickets. That's April 5th through the 7th, Del Mar Fairgrounds. Over 2,500 of Southern California's coolest hot rods, muscle cars, trick trucks, and more. So be listening for that. We'll give those away this hour. But right now, let's get to this. Is this a must-win game for the Aztecs? Just for you, John. (laughs) I don't think they can advance if they don't win. Well, Well, it's harder. It's harder to go through the loser's bracket if that's what you guys are saying. Right. It's harder to win it. But, you know, from a standpoint of making the NCAA tournament, it's not a must-win game. Correct. So it's how you look at it. If you're looking at it for from a Mountain West tournament standpoint, then, yeah, it's a must-win game because else you're not going to get to the championship tomorrow afternoon. But from an NCAA tournament standpoint, it's not a must-win. I look, I, I want them to win the Mountain West Conference Tournament. They've been in the Mountain West Conference Tournament championship game. Um, every season the Dutch has been the co- head coach of them. Yep. And I think it would just, I mean, don't you want to give yourself uh the best seed possible? And if you go into March uh, selection Sunday and you have won your conference tournament and your rankings and your net rankings are all really good. And yeah, uh, tonight it, it must win game, John. Must win game. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I have a theory. Oh, okay. It may be it may be accurate, it may be inaccurate. My theory is this the winner of this game is going to be a five seed in the NCAA tournament, and the loser of this game is going to be a six seed in the NCAA tournament. That's my theory, which means a lot is on the line if that's accurate. There's a big difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a ton of difference. San Diego State last year as a five played a 
a uh, team out of a you know mid-major league in Charleston. You're not playing a high major team. Typically, you see high majors as in 11s and more mid-majors as 12s for whatever that's worth. And plus, I don't like the idea of playing an 11 that plays in Dayton and builds confidence because there's a winner coming out and then playing you and they have less nerves because they've already played a game in the NCAA tournament. I could be wrong. They might lose this game and still be a five. They might win this game and who knows. But I, I think it's important because seeding could still be on the line. Next question. Guys, I know you're both crushed, but the Padres' breakout game has been moved to March 23rd oh, after today's rainout. I know, shed a little tear. Who are, who were you most looking forward to watching for the Padres? I think Dylan the, sees. the easiest. Yeah, is he going to pitch in that game? Break out. Uh, the easiest answer is is Ethan Salas. But honestly, because they didn't trade them, and there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. Robbie Snelling was going to start this game. Yeah, good point. And for me. That that pitcher guy that won uh, pitcher of the year in the minors last right. year, like he is very intriguing to me. So I, I I'll, I'll say Robbie Snelling. Okay, I had a point to make that I've forgotten. Okay, um, so it couldn't have been that good. Probably not. Oh, here it's the point that uh, Ben Fadden talking Friars made. Who? How many major league teams would this Padres prospect lineup be? Oh my let answer, gosh! Let me answer it, Ben. If you're listening, and if you're not, go back and find this. Zero. They beat zero. <laughs> Because if the Padres thought they could win with this team, they'd field them in the major leagues. It would be a little unconventional. I mean, obviously, you have young players in there as well. But um, the, I'm not saying – zero is the answer. Zero. And that's like saying how many college football teams would beat NFL teams. Zero. That's yes. how it works. Uh, ben Fadden, um, stop it. Yeah, how many college baseball teams would beat double-A baseball teams? Zero. I, I, always, I always hate the, the conversation of like – Back in the day when Alabama was really good, it's like, oh, they would have, they, they could beat the Browns. It's like, guys, yes, stop, stop it. it. Next question. Who will have the best season in the Padres rotation? I will go, I'll screw it. I'll go with Michael, or I'll go with Dylan Cease, Michael Cease. I'll go with Dylan Cease. I think he's going to find a slider this year. And I think you're going to see more closer to this 2022 version of than of him than the 2023 version of him. So I'll, I'll go with Dylan Cease. I'm swinging big here, John. Uh, best season in the rotation. First year with the club, getting traded late. Um, I'm going to say it's Dylan Cease. I agree with you. I think as a 28 year old, he's got the most upside. Now again, he's coming off a year in which he wasn't, you know at his best he wasn't but he's got the most upside here i think he has the most potential to have the best year on the staff so i'll double down with you and go with dylan cease next question where does Jaden ladie's season rank for you in san diego state history Ooh. okay so i have numbers pulled up here john yeah um michael cage he's not going to beat him as far as points per game in a single season michael cage averaged 24 and a half points okay. in 83 84 so but overall points right uh, no, it's points per game. Right, but in overall, he could still... Uh, he, he's only 37 points off overall most points of the season, right? Right, that's where I was going to go in, oh, with okay. next. Is yeah. Jaden Ledee, if he scores 37 more points, then he becomes the all-time points leader for a single season. Yep. And if we're going deep into the weeds here, if you're looking at player efficiency rating, okay. Jaden Ledee is top of the list at 29.4. I don't know what that really means, but I'll go with it. It's Sounds good good. Because player efficiency rating has to mean something good. He's leading the list. Um. This is a top two season in Aztec history, I feel like. Wow. I feel like oh, this season man, is a top two season in Aztec history. Well, it's where, are you, where are you putting it like a Malachi Flynn? <sighs> you know, where are you putting Kawhi? Where are you putting X Thames? Are we, are we counting like team success in that mix or what? I don't know. I mean, I'm with you. I, I could absolutely argue top two. I could argue top five. I mean, it's got to be top five. Now, and depending on your metric, it could be top two. Like, just like listen to these like, like numbers. Yeah, you know he could lead. He could. He he's obviously um, on pace to have the most points scored in a single season in Aztec history. Mm -hmm. He could average close to twenty two points per game if he has a couple big games here. Yeah. I know it's twenty one right now. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and he leads San Diego State. As far as player efficient, efficient, efficient I can't even can't say, say it. Word. Just say he's very, uh, he's very good. He's very efficient. He's very <laughs> yeah. efficient. Um, you know, he almost he averages around nine points per game. Oh, he's, geez. Right, John, I, I totally thought that was your cell phone. I was sorry, like, John, nine rebounds per game. 
What's happening? This is becoming a bit of a they're uh, testing the PA. situation. They're oh. testing PA. That's fine. I, I'm with you. I mean, I could argue it's a top two season. I could argue it's a top five season, but that's because San Diego State's had so many good players. All yeah. right, they're jamming out here at the Thomas and Mac. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. On the other side, we're giving away two pairs of tickets to the car show coming to Del Mar April 5th through the 7th. So be listening. We're giving away those tickets on the other side. We're also going to, again, preview tonight's game at 640 between San Diego State and Utah State. And David J. from Mad Friars off this Dylan Cease trade will join us coming up at 530. So a lot to get to between now and 6. And then the countdown to tip off for San Diego State and Utah State. Plus giveaways coming up next. Stay with us on John and Jim. Guys, you're probably looking for the perfect place to watch all the college basketball action this weekend, and you can do so right in San Diego County over with our friends at Novo Brazil Brewing, all of their locations showing all of the action this weekend. We've been telling you about their support for San Diego State men's and women's basketball through their brand-new co-branded product that benefits the Mesa Foundation Collective, and that collective benefits San Diego State student-athletes. So this is a product, the Aztecs Raspberry Kombucha, taste-tested by Lamont Butler, Jaden Ledee, Micah Parrish, San Diego State men's basketball players. They've got great spots, IB, Otay Ranch, with massive LED screens. They've got their brand-new spot in Mission Valley, which is indoor-outdoor, perfect for San Diego. It seats 350 people. They have a full bar menu, 60 taps of Novo Brazil beer, the kombucha I've been telling you about in tons of flavors and seltzers, but it's great for the whole family because of their food, because of their great food, eclectic food offering, sandwiches and salads, tacos and burgers, empanadas, appetizers, Brazilian inspired entrees and more. Get there this weekend. Get there tonight for more information. Visit NovoBrew.com. That's N-O-V-O-Brew.com.
I'd be listening in the next uh, five, seven minutes. We'll give away a pair of tickets. Actually, we'll give away two pairs of tickets to the car show coming to the Delmar Fairgrounds April 5th through the 7th. We'll be listening. We'll tell you what the call. It'll be between now and 5 p.m. There's a report this afternoon. Yeah. Yes, John. The Astros are now, quote unquote, in serious pursuit per Ken Rosenthal and Chandler Rome of the Athletic of Blake Snell. Now, the Astros have had injuries in their bullpen, and I think potentially they're facing some health issues around the rotation. They are. So Blake Snell in uh, pursuit, the Astros are in serious pursuit, quote unquote, of Blake Snell. That will be interesting to see. Is this going to be a high AAV deal where he doesn't get the length that he thought he was going to get to begin the offseason? Or will this be a lower AAV deal where he's getting a fifth or sixth year? But this could come to fruition. I mean, we're getting close now. I wouldn't be surprised if Snell signed very soon at this point with the season starting in two weeks. So in the first hour, we talked about, you know, best rotations in baseball. And I said, like, if the Padres were healthy, just like, I'll throw them in the mix, see what happens. Could they come out as a top five rotation in baseball if all healthy for the entire season? Potentially. Right. Like top yeah. 10? Like, yeah, of course. It, you know, like I'll throw them in the mix. I'll throw the top four in the Padres rotation up against anybody in baseball. And I went over some teams in baseball that, you know, were also in that mix as well. One of them being the Houston Astros. If you get Blake Snell there and if Justin Verlander gets back healthy and you got Lance McCullers and, uh, a couple other, like, you know, the the Astros, the, that rotation is nasty if you add Blake Snell. Now, the good thing is, if he goes to the Houston Astros, great. Yeah. Not in the, not in the National League, not with the Giants, not with, like, uh, the Phillies or, you know, a team that you'd be competing against to, to make a, a postseason appearance. Like, go to Houston. Perfect. Go get out of the National League because... Um, that was a, a big concern for a lot of Padres fans is if Blake Snell went to the Giants, which has been rumored, I feel like all off season, mm-hmm. then that that's a, that's, you know, going to be tough because you're not only fighting with the D backs it's for a wild card spot. Now you get to fight with the Giants and then the Phillies and the Cubs and, you know, whoever else to, for two spots in the wild card. So go to Houston. Perfect. Who was it? Who was it that just got the AAV in that forty-three range? Was it Zach Wheeler? With no, the uh, Wheeler th- wasn't it like a three-year, like one thirty? Might have been Wheeler. Right. Well, whatever. no, no, Nola. It was Nola. No, I thought it was more recent than that. Maybe it was when you were off for like having a kidney stone. Oh yeah, that when I was like um, dying. Yeah, you were like dying. Zach Wheeler. Am I? Am I confusing him? Maybe I could be. No, he got a three-year, one twenty-six deal. Okay. A week ago. So think about that. Do the math on that. That's 42 a year. He didn't have the season Blake Snell had. So that's just how this works. You could argue whether Snell's going to replicate it, but you can't argue that he didn't have the season that Zach Wheeler had. I don't see how it's less than that, Jim. I don't see how you're giving Blake Snell less than three years, 126, if Zach Wheeler just got that. So that's my, I mean, that's a ton of money. That's crazy money. Yeah. So I think if you go short, it's in that 40 range. I think if you go longer, maybe it's more in that 30 range. But I'm fascinated to see the deal that Blake Snell gets because I think he's a fascinating case of a pitcher because he's had two dominant years, Cy Young years, and then he's had other years where he's been you know, a very average major league starter uh, in the big league. So I'm really fascinated to see what it looks like. And when you look at Blake Snell... Yeah, two good seasons, two really good seasons, great, Cy, seasons. great seasons, historic seasons, Cy yeah. Young seasons, and everything else has been blah. Yeah, and I know there's, and even I compared Dylan Cease, like okay, high walks, maybe a little high ERA. You know, you could argue that Dylan Cease is like a right-handed Blake Snell because the stuff is electric. Blake Snell stuff electric walks a lot of guys. The biggest difference with Dylan Cease, the biggest difference. And I think if Blake Snell did this, we wouldn't be bitching about him so much. Is that one, he 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 always gives you, you know, 30 plus starts a year. Right. And he gives you over 170 innings. Blake Snell never did like it was never the case with Blake Snell. Blake Snell was never a six inning pitcher, besides his Cy Young years. He's like it always was a struggle with Dylan Cease. 
he'll give you 30 plus starts. He'll give you 170 plus innings and he'll give you 200 plus strikeouts. Yeah. And you're getting it by the way. Now you gave up a lot of prospect capital, but they obviously have concerns about their payroll too. They're going to pay him $8 million and Blake Snell is going to make four times that minimum. Which year. that's pretty good. If and, you're the Padres could have a better year. I mean, there's no guarantee of it. I would be skeptical of Snell signing late being anywhere near able to replicate what he did last year. New For team sure. signing late. I mean, he's coming off a historic season, like you said. Yeah. So, and now Cease, again, is, is switching leagues and doing this late in camp, and it's a transition here with everything going on with the but he's, Soul Series coming up. But, again, you're paying him eight, and you got him for two years, and he's going to be, um, you know, he's going to make more money next year, but it's nothing nothing like Zach Wheeler or Blake Snell money no. for, for Dylan Cease coming up. So I like what the Padres did. Did they give up a lot to get him? Maybe they did. We're going to find out. But they also didn't want to pay someone $45 million. So how are you going to do it? If you're going to have to pay someone $40 million, then you're going to have to trade away some players. And that's what they did. And yeah. it makes sense for them. You know, makes, maybe this makes sense for the Astros. Maybe, because the Astros are, 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 guess what, John, in win-now mode. No doubt. And, like, you know, they're a team that's been to the ALCS how many straight years in a row? Oh my, is, it, is it six? Six or seven. So like I mean, the it's Aztecs a... of, the American League, of the American League. <laughs> they just keep going to championship series after championship uh, series. Exactly. Um, and then there's a little uncertainty with just, uh, Justin Verlander with his shoulder, even though he's back to pitching and just, I don't know if he's gonna be ready for the start of the season. Um, but yeah, you add you add him to the mix, Blake Snell. I mean, yeah, they're right where they typically are. And and you're just if you're a Padres fan, you're you're like, thank goodness you're just not anywhere close to us. I agree with that. All right. The first two callers have two free pairs of tickets to the Del Mar car show. The number to call is 877-767-4760. Again, the first two callers have two free pairs or two free tickets to the upcoming Del Mar Car Show, 877-767-4760. This is the car show returning to Del Mar for the Southern California big hot rodding event. This is the biggest hot rodding event of the spring. It's the Good Guys 23rd Del Mar Nationals, April 5th through the 7th, Del Mar Fairgrounds, 2,500 of Southern California's coolest hot rods, muscle cars, trick trucks, low riders, and more. For complete details, or to register your vehicle, or to purchase tickets, visit good-guys.com. That's good-guys.com. First two callers to 877-767-4760 have two free tickets to that event. Is Tommy Pham an inevitability for the Padres or not? Plus, previewing tonight's massive showdown in the Mountain West here in Vegas between San Diego State and Utah State at 640 right here on San Diego Sports 760. Hour three, John and Jim next. Hey guys, it's Schaefer, and start your weekend with my friends at Windmill Farms. You're heading home for the evening. You can pick up dinner over there. They've got all of your grocery needs for the weekend as well. Pick up the food you need to enjoy all the college basketball action. And a reminder, if the Aztecs win the conference tournament, you're getting 20% off your order of $50 or more using promo code GOAZTECS at checkout. They have everything you need. I love it as a lunch spot. It's great for dinners as well. And again, for all your grocery needs, the organic farm fresh produce and meats, the amazing craft beer selection, the deli, pick up a sandwich card. Your eighth sandwich is free. And again, if the Aztecs win the tournament championship, use promo code GOAZTECS at checkout on orders over $50 or more and get 20% off your order. They're essentially located right by the Mesa, family-owned, Trevor and his family. It's just an amazing place. Smiles on their faces, the way they treat their customers. You have to get over there. They have weekly specials for you at windmillfarmsmarket.com, so check that out as well. And here's the deal. Even if you don't live in the college area or work in the college area, no problem. You can find Windmill Farms on Instacart. Have your groceries delivered directly to your doorstep. Whatever you need this weekend, a reminder to shop local and shop at Windmill Farms.
All right, this update is brought to you by the San Diego Rescue Mission. We'll start with the Aztecs on the semifinals of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. They'll take on Utah State 6.30 tip-off. 6 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. Jane Ledee, Mountain West Conference Player of the Year, voted by the media. And Great Osabor, Mountain West Conference Player of the Year, voted by the coaches. Should be an interesting matchup. Padres, their spring breakout game today was canceled between the Mariners due to rain. It's been rescheduled to March 23rd. And NFL news of the day, a big one, Aaron Donald. He announced his retirement after 10 seasons with the Rams. Eight of those seasons, all pro, defensive player of the year, defensive rookie of the year, and won Super Bowl. Next stop for him will be the Hall of Fame in 2029. Easter is the season of hope. Please help the San Diego Rescue Mission bring Hope to hungry and homeless neighbors this Easter. Just $2.72 provides one Easter holiday meal. Donate now at sderescue.org. The rescue mission is where hunger ends and hope begins. All right, San Diego, Southern California, what's going on? This is the final hour of John and Jim. We are separated today, Jim. Maybe that's better for us. Um, is I'm in Las Vegas. We are we are across state lines. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. You are in San Diego, California, presumably. Can I uh, and, can uh, I call you out real quick? Yeah, sure. You absolutely can. Okay. Just like that, you're going to call me out. I'm just going to call you out. This is what yeah. happens. Um, So last night, after the game, yeah. awesome win. Awesome win. Great win. Jay Ledee played out of his mind. What's this have to do with me? It's coming. Oh, no. And, I, be, uh, be careful where you're going here. And you texted me. Where, 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 would, okay. I be go- where would I be going? I don't know. It but involves I'm, sushi. Is that oh, a problem? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. No, I was. I'll exp- I, it, I, I would tell you what. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I was just going to say, yeah. you told me, because we've been there before. It's a place uh, in, I think it's like Chinatown or yeah. Koreatown yeah. in, in yeah. Las Vegas. One of the best sushi spots I've ever been to. I think you've ever been to. Spectacular. Amazing. It's an all-you-can-eat sushi bar. And the sushi is like top quality. It's not it's like so just good. like average yeah. sushi. It's really good. 35 bucks, all you can eat. And you tell me, dude, I'm, I'm, like, go- I'm going. I'm dude. going to sushi. I'm going to eat sushi. I'm you- like, what, yeah, I'm like, what's it called? You're like, it's sushi. I'm like, no, what's the name of the restaurant? You're like, it's sushi. I'm like, no, I'm like, no it's it's called it's sh- sushi. Right. So I was excited for you because I was I like, was I was like, dude, that's awesome. You're going to go to like one of the best yes. sushi places there is that I've been to and you've been to. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't wait to see all the pictures and I need to know your reaction to the popcorn lobster roll. <laughs> right. And so I text you like a couple hours yeah. later. I'm like, bro, where's these pictures at, man? What's going I sent on? I you pictures from Google image. Or whatever and you go, sushi. and you go, I didn't go. I'm like, what? why didn't you go? He goes, I, I, I ate like, like free food. Right. <sighs> I had like the media food here, but let me explain because so, it's a fair point. I, you should ridicule me for that. But yes. let me ask you this. Like, can I expense? Here's a serious question. It was like, you're talking about a hundred dollar difference. Why? I would have had to Uber there. Okay. How much is the Uber there? Seriously. 25 bucks. 20, okay. So 25 there. Like you said, all you can eat sushi. Let's just say it's 35 bucks plus whatever tax tip. Let's just say it's 40, 48, 50 48 bucks. bucks. Okay. So 50 bucks. So I'm, th- I'm a $25 Uber there. I'm 50 to eat. I'm 25 back. I'm a hundred in. And they have a nice spread of food at the Thomas and Max Center. And I'm starving. And I have my equipment. So I would have had to go back to the hotel, then go out. Like it would have been like a two hour swing and a hundred dollars. Uh, I don't know if iHeart would have been thrilled with the one hundred dollar sushi meal, even off a win. So I was like, eh, I just passed. I know it's very soft. It was so soft. So soft. It's also soft. David J is going to join us. Matt Fryer's at five thirty, and I told Jim I'm hungry, so I'm I'm bailing. Yeah, again, well, that, that's where again I was going to go with this. Is like you just, <laughs> what's going on, man? Well, here's the thing. It's like I'm doing pre, and then I have to be here for the entire game, and I want to be here for the entire game. So I don't have an opportunity to eat. If I just start a show at three in the afternoon, I can't eat until ten o'clock at night. I'm doing a post game show. This game doesn't start until six forty. So like you're taking one for the team. John and Jim is a team. We're a team, everybody. Sure. Sometimes we're like the 2023 <laughs> Padres and right. we fall flat on our face. Right. But sometimes we're like the 2022 Padres. Exactly. That's, that's exactly That's most right. of the time. We're, we're, we're a team that, you know, we work with what we got. Exactly. And, and we get to a point of, of winning. 
we win. Let me t- let me start here. I want to get to Tommy Pham because I, I don't know if it's an inevitability. I think it's happening. Did you see uh, Michael Taylor sign today for a four point four million dollar deal? That's why I think it's happening. Like yeah. these options keep coming off the board, and it's going to be a reasonable number. It's not going to be extreme. It, it's going to cost something of. It's a real number because he's a veteran coming off a good year, but it's nothing crazy. You can get him on a one year deal, and they have a need. So I do think it's going to happen, and we'll see if it plays out or not. I just want to say this. Yesterday at the Mount West champ, uh, tournament was the best quarterfinal crowd I had seen in maybe my five trips here. It okay. was the best quarterfinal crowd I had seen because you had huge fan bases, Jim, make the trip. You had San Diego State, obviously. Utah State had, it had to have four or 5,000 people here yesterday. New Mexico last night, it was slightly embarrassing, truthfully, for Boise State. New Mexico had like 90% of the crowd. It was like 10 to 1. Boise State, or excuse me, New Mexico State to Boise State. Well, guess what? The three draws of the tournament are still here. You have San Diego State, Utah State, New Mexico. I don't know about Colorado State, how many people they have here, but it's kind of regardless because you have huge fan bases that are here. New Mexico, everyone's like, oh, if they beat Boise, they're in the tournament. Not so fast, my friend. They could use another win here tonight. They'll have 5,000 in the building. San Diego State's going to have 5,000 in the building. Utah State's going to have 5,000 in the building. I wonder this. How close are we going to get to a sellout on a Friday night in Vegas with this semifinal? I think it's going to be an amazing atmosphere in this building. I think it's going to feel like a bowl game between San Diego State and Utah State. They've played in the championship four of the last five years. Um, it's And here's the other thing, Jim, that I know you touched on the first segment, or I don't even know if you did, but I listened, but I only kind of listened. What, what? The Aztecs sometimes don't play their best tournament uh, basketball in the quarterfinal, but they really do in their semifinal. Like once they've gotten their feet wet, they really go in this round. I want to see if that happens here tonight. Like, do they have their sea legs underneath them mm-hmm. and get off to a much better start here today than they, you know, have recently or even yesterday? That's how it felt like last year in the tournament, not the Mountain West Conference tournament, but the NCAA tournament is their first game against Charleston. It felt kind of like just get, we got to get to this game in any way possible. And it was a struggle. And then after that, they looked really good for the next couple of games. And then you get to, um, you know, the lead eight and it's like a back. It's I get what you're saying. And it yeah. makes perfect sense. Like it, it's always the first one's always the hardest. Exactly. And then once you get past the first one, you kind of can take a you know, deep breath and regroup. And you're like, OK, we got to fix this, 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 this. And you feel better about yourself going into the second game coming off of a win, however it were to happen. And with the games yesterday, John, I mean, I was talking about it in the first segment with you have uh, the two, three, and four seeds all out. Great call. Yeah. And you have a seven versus a six and then a five versus a one. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that's wh- like, whoa. Okay. It just shows you how deep the Mountain West Conference is because one team that we were both scared about was Nevada, right? Nevada was a team that was on a, on a red hot. They were red hot. They lost Boise State. Boise State beat the Aztecs two times this year, one on senior night and then on the yeah. road in a close game. They're out. So it just like getting past the first game, you don't have to face a Nevada or a Boise State. You feel good about your chances because, you know, Nevada, like going up against Utah State tonight, I said, if you get the same performances like you did in, in their first games from Great Osabor and Jane Ledee, those wash each other out, in my opinion. Sure. It's about what are the others going to do? The Micah Parishes, the Reese Waters, the Tremels. Like, you need to get some scoring from the others if Jane Ledee has a big game because Great Osabor is probably going to have a big game as well. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Now, here's what's interesting. The odds-on favorites suggest a 5-6 championship matchup. San Diego State is <laughs> favored by four and a half points tonight. Do you think that's a lot? Um, yes and no is how I feel about it. Maybe that's why Vegas is good. The reason I say no is San Diego State won this game by 14 points on their floor. And when Utah State doesn't play at elevation like a lot of elevation teams, they've proven not to be the identical team that they've been when playing at home. So I think that's a factor. Plus... I mean, you know, it goes through San Diego State until it doesn't. I mean, the Aztecs dominate this tournament. There's no other way to put it. They haven't won every single championship, but, man, they play a lot in championship games. So maybe it is a point or two high, but I was not surprised at all. San Diego State was favored. And here's the other thing. New Mexico tonight is a two-and-a-half-point favorite, needing to potentially play their way in 
to the NCAA tournament field. You could argue it's more important tonight for New Mexico than it is for Colorado State. Um, let's hear from Brian Dutcher, because if you missed this two hours ago, Jim did play this earlier. And this is interesting. He spoke on Parrish and Waters. I think they were combined one of 15 yesterday. It wasn't Parrish, great. Parrish is 0 of 8 from the floor, and Waters was one of seven off the bench. Take a listen to Brian Dutcher yesterday about that duo. Well, that's how he's on the floor, because he guards at a high level. He rebounds. You know, uh, I felt bad for Mike. He missed two free throws. We were up two at the end of the game. He missed them both. And so I just said, to be a really good basketball player, you have to sh have a short memory. So anything that happened today is it's in the rearview mirror. Come out and make every shot you take next game and shoot like you think you're going to. You know, it's, it's important for a coach to give his team confidence, even when it doesn't seem like they deserve any. But Reese and Mike are going to make shots tomorrow. I'm convinced of it. They're too good of players. They're too good of shooters. And I think uh, the ocean will open up tomorrow. It'll look like the size of the ocean, the rim. We're making shots tomorrow. He's trying to speak it into yeah. existence, and that's like what a good that. coach does is trying to give your, your, your players going through some tough stretches all the confidence in the world that you have in them. And that right there is exactly what Dutch did because mm -hmm. they're struggling. We all know it. They know it. The coaching staff knows it. Um, but if no one's going to like believe in you, then why should you believe in your, like, it's just kind of one of those things of yes. like, Hey, well, my coach doesn't, he's not going to play me because I'm not shooting well. If I do go out there and play, how do I have any confidence that I'm going to play well? And no, when he doesn't believe me uh, to put me on the floor. This goes back to my initial point of sometimes after the game, the first game of a tournament, you just get looser. Like, there's a reason to be tight in a quarterfinal. It's like you got to get it. You want to continue the streak of they always win and advance in this tournament. And, like, now I'm not saying it's house money. It could be an NCAA tournament. But it just feels like they should be looser and freer based on what past teams have shown us before with San Diego State. And based on what Brian Dutcher just said there, like he's saying, listen, uh, we won the game. And, and, you know, there was a, you know, Jim, because you listen and you see social media and you know the reaction yesterday. People, uh, how, you know, this was pathetic. This was pathetic the way they played. I mean, there was some of that yesterday. I'm thinking to myself, well, hold on. It's survive in advanced season. Like, I don't want to hear in the NCAA tournament if San Diego State wins any game. I don't want to hear but. If right. they win their opening round game in the NCAA tournament, one nothing, it would be a surprise. It would be the first <laughs> shutout in Division One college basketball history. That'd be fun. But if they win the game, they win the game. Like It's not a time to really reflect. Now, the Mount West tournament's different. You still have time between now and Selection Sunday and the NCAA tournament to improve. And once you get into the tournament, of course, you can improve as well. But what matters now is sheer winning. It's the only thing. It's like in the World Series, if you win it, Machado goes 0 for 4. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You have won a World Series. So, like, this is the end of the road. This is this is the end of the ride. You just not need to find ways to win. And also this. San Diego State opened as a two-point favorite yesterday. Now, they closed as a four-point favorite or four-and-a-half because one of the good UNLV forwards, Caleb Boone, was out. But the Aztecs won the game by three, and they were favored by four. Like, there's nothing pathetic about winning in a conference tournament on someone else's home floor. And by the way, credit to Deion Thomas, the guard, the point guard for UNLV. Oh he just went off in the game. But San Diego State still... Jim, despite going down four, despite Thomas at the end of regulation, mm -hmm. and despite going down four in overtime, San Diego State won somehow, some way. It, it was a, a first half that you just kind of want to forget yesterday um, without the Darion Trammell buzzer beater at the end of the first half, which was, I think you said his sixth buzzer beater this year. Six to beat the first half buzzer. <laughs> that's that crazy? so crazy. That's so many in it's 27 so many. games, 28 it's games. So many. So many. But taking away that three, like the first half was ugly. The offense, oh, yeah. it was bad. Yep. It just was bad. But the thing about the, the Aztecs is because of their defense, they stay in these games. It's just a matter of can they get some shots to fall. And to start the second half, the only way they're going to win that game is if they started out hot in the second half. And they absolutely did that. The second half was complete 180 from the first half, mainly because Jane Ledee went freaking off. But... When you win games like that, like you mentioned, and you have bad outings from guys, like if you win the world, if you win game one of a, of a world series, Manny Machado goes zero for five with five strikeouts. Guess what? You won game one of the world series. That's like the you, thing. it doesn't like yeah. you, you won the game. You can worry about it later. Now, if they lost the game, then we're talking yeah, about it more. Definitely. But because you won, you now say, all right, dodge that bullet by us sucking. And basically, mostly they're shooting right? Other than Jaden Ladee. But now you go into the second game. It's like, all right, cool. Reset. 
start over, let's go. Like, let me, here's an example. I'm going to go to the San Diego State FAU box score from the Final Four. And maybe it's an extreme example. It's the Final Four. Obviously, all that matters <laughs> Just is... Just a nice. little extreme, but okay. But, but, I mean, does anyone does anyone um, recall saying, man, you know, Darion was two of eight from the floor in that game. Could have really <laughs> used, a, you know, another three out of... Give me or, another play that or, was not good. Like, what did Bradley um, do? I think Bradley had a good game. Bradley, remember, he had three threes immediately out of the gates. He had yeah. nine consecutive points. He was five of 12, 21 points, four of eight from three. Okay. So go, he was really good. Yeah. Go to the, like the Alabama um, game. Go to the Alabama, Creighton by game. By the way, Ledee was five of 12 wow. in that game. Um, right. Exactly. I, I have to go back to the, right, the Creighton but game. Remember a lot, we, well, what we were talking about a lot going into that FAU game was Matt Bradley has to show up. And it's, because Matt Bradley was a really good player. Yeah. And he did he not nice play well in the Alabama game and the uh, Creighton game. He was right. really bad. But he was good against Charleston. He was good against FAU. You yeah. Is remember it, it. And again, is anybody going to say, like, right. man, they beat the number one team in the country and they beat Creighton to go to the Final Four, but well, Matt they, Bradley wasn't good? Well, thank <laughs> you for bringing up the example. Bradley played just 20 minutes against Creighton. I mean, for him, that was crazy low. He scored two points. One of the great scorers in the history of the program. I mean, he was a great scorer. Yeah. He was one of eight, but they won and yeah. they made a final four. Now, this is different. I get it. It's a Mount West quarterfinal. And they were on the heels of two game losers. But it's tournament time, John, and we know what tournament time brings. It's a yeah. lot of like overreaction. And, yeah. and if players don't play well, it's like, what the hell? But the most important thing is surviving and advancing, however it is. And that's what they did yesterday. And they had an all-American performance from Jane Ledee. They're going to need more of that from Jane Ledee, coupled with maybe a Mike Parrish or a Reese Waters. One of those guys kind of has to have a little bit of a that game. Um, and then you can do it. Jane's dominance at times is so utterly that you almost Oh, man. If he would have been perfect or near perfect, he would have been forty three. Again, it's hard to do. It's right. hard to go seventeen of eighteen. If he did go seventeen of eighteen, he would have been forty three. His dominance is I mean it's a level of combination. You see three point six in different games this year. The will be national player of the year, Zach Eady, he seven four. He's got an under high center, even in the back left. Undersized center, and he's, it's you know it's cliche, but it's man among boys at times. Now that's different tonight, Jim. You have Darius to talk about for days on end. Yeah, players of the year, not a player of the year. Players. You have Great Osibor, player of the year is voted by the coaches for Utah State, who's a really talented forward, a slightly undersized forward, and then you have Jaden Ledee, a slightly undersized center, who won it by the media. Two players of the year squaring off in the same game. Here tonight, will they cancel each other out? That's a good question. Thank you, Ted. Oh, hi, Ted. Um, oh, well, look at this. Did Ted, Ted bring you food? Ted's bringing. He's bringing Pepsi. Wow, he's got water for us. Very kind. Thank you, Ted. Very, very kind, Ted. Yeah. It, would you say, John, that uh, tonight, even though it's a semifinal game, yeah, is like as far as the Mount West Conference tournament goes, the matchup of the tournament. Like even no matter what Ooh, happens for question. the no matter what happens for the uh, finals, if it's New Mexico versus Utah State yeah, but, or New Mexico but, versus San Diego or New Colorado Mexico, State, San Diego State's kind of sexy with the whole Chandler House. It's drama sexy, over but the last couple of you years. don't get a player of the year versus a player of oh, the year. Right. No, you're right. Um, yeah, you could make the argument. I mean, they've met in the championship four of the last five years. They keep saying that. Oh, That's yeah. kind of crazy. Oh, an Eleven yeah. team league. They've met in the championship four of the last five years. And oh, by the way, in those four championship games, Jim, they've split them. Yep. Utah State's got two. I mean, I don't want to mention it, but you know, I'm not even going to mention it. 2020. I'm, well, you mentioned it. I I just did. But that's I'm fine. I'm going to mention what happened. Well, you know, yesterday, yeah. did you you know my jinx? You weren't here yesterday. Did you did you catch any of this? There was a there was a huge jinx out there that I never really mentioned on air yesterday. It was San Diego State had advanced in the Mountain West sixteen straight times, sixteen straight years, and it yeah. became seventeen. Yeah. Um, so I was all concerned about it. Um. But you know, anyway, you know I what? Uh, afterwards, you know what also was, I believe, either yesterday or today. What's that? The four-year anniversary of like when the world shut down. No. Yep. I was 
Oh, really? Is that when the um, NCAA tournament was canceled, maybe, or the uh, Rudy Gobert circumstance? That right was, I think, the NCAA tournament was canceled. Oh, my gosh. And that's when it was like, uh-oh, and everything immediately followed, and everything shut down. So, yay. yeah. We're, yay, <laughs> yay. That's four years ago, by the way. Four years, dude. I can't believe it. Some, some of oh. it feels 40 years ago, and some of it feels like I can't believe it's four years. I know. And four years ago, I was like this lost puppy, and now... You were. And I have a fiance. Lost. Well, yeah, I'm a still lost puppy. She just but has at least, a leash on you. Yeah, at least I have someone that could like help with my life. Right. So, wow. Wow. Okay. So, David Jay is going to join us for Mad Fryers in 10 minutes. And by us, I mean Jim. Yeah, because you're soft and you need to get like a sandwich or something or like a I yogurt should. parfait. I, I think I should. I think I should. What, uh, what kind of What's, food do they have in the, the media it, room there? It was very good. Now, last night, why I didn't get sushi was. Yeah, what did you eat? Honestly, you know, it wasn't, you wouldn't have thought it was great. It was a salad. Oh my it God. was like potatoes. Oh my God. It was corn. Oh, it was fruit. Corn's now they fine. Had, they had like a meat entree, but I don't eat meat. Then so they had you, dessert. I you passed dessert. up on some of the best sushi around for, for a salad. salad and potatoes and corn? Yeah, that's John Schaefer. And fruit? Yeah, basically. I just, and some uh, almond RX. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was curbing my hunger. Absolutely. <sighs> That's exactly right. You, you do you, man. If I was I with you, we would have been at sushi. I can I tell know, you that. dude. If it was me and you, we would have been at sushi. I would have forced you to go out. You'd be like, 100%. oh, really? And I'm like, no, no, we're going to sushi. Like, that's 100%. what happened. 100%. But it All is right, what here's, it is. Here's what I want right now. Uh, caller 6, I want to give free tickets to, to see Cage the Elephant on their Neon Pill Tour. This is at Vieja Serena, July 6th. 877-767-4760. Caller 6, you have two free tickets. Cage the Elephant, Neon Pill Tour, VA House Arena, July 6th. Tickets and info at LiveNation.com. Again, tickets and info at LiveNation.com. Caller 6, they are yours. The number to call, 877-767-4760. Now, the countdown to tip-off will begin at 6 p.m. Tip-off is at 641 tonight. David J. from Mad Fries. What did the Padres give up in that Dylan C. steal? David J. is going to join Jim on the other side. We have Jim's back page still ahead as well. Countdown to tip-off will begin at 6 p.m. Ted Leitner on the call tonight for this Mountain West semifinal between San Diego State and Utah State from the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. But David J. from Mad Friars joins us next right here on John and Jim. I'll tell you what has been the perfect snack for me this week, traveling from San Diego to Las Vegas on the run, not a ton of time, looking for something healthy. It's Almond RX, which I've been telling you about. Almond RX, it's healthy. It tastes great. It's got your daily dose of vitamin D as well. This has helped eliminate the vending machi machine from my day. Uh, it can do the same for you. Everyone's looking for something healthy, a tasty snack that curbs hunger. This is going to curb your hunger for hours. Look no further than Almond RX. It's the first and only skinless almond fortified with vitamin D, and it was founded by a San Diego sports medicine physician. Almond RX is packed with a powerhouse of nutrients, antioxidants as well. It supports your heart health, your cellular health, and your gut health as well. You can find Almond RX in San Diego, Foodlands in San Diego County, Harvest Ranch, in Encinitas, also at almondrx.com. That's A L M O N D R X.com. In fact, if you go there right now, you're going to get free shipping on your order of $25 or more at almondrx.com. Almond RX curbs hunger. It is perfect when you're traveling or for that on the go lifestyle. Again, free shipping right now. Go there right now. Free shipping on orders over $25. Go to almondrx.com.
All right, this update is brought to you by the San Diego Rescue Mission. Aztecs take on Utah State tonight, 6.30 p.m. in the semifinals of the Mount West Conference Tournament. 6 p.m., excuse me, 6.30 p.m. is when tip-off happens. 6 p.m. is when our pregame cover starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. Moving over, over to the Padres, their spring breakout game was canceled today due to rain. It's supposed to be rescheduled for March 23rd. And NFL news of the day, Aaron Donald announced his retirement today. Ten seasons with the Rams, eight All-Pro seasons, Defensive Player of the Year, one Super Bowl. Next stop for him will be the Hall of Fame. Easter is the season of hope. Please help the San Diego Rescue Mission bring hope to hunger and homeless neighbors this Easter. This $2.72 provides one Easter holiday meal. Donate now at sdrescue.org. The Rescue Mission is where hunger ends and hope begins. John and Jim on a Friday. John is off and he's going to get some salad for the start of the pregame show at 6 p.m. right here, leading you up to tip off at 6.30, San Diego State, taking on Utah State in the semifinals of the Mount West Conference Tournament. But before then, we're joined right now by David J. of Mad Friars. And, uh, David, I, I know you were in uh, Peoria to watch the spring breakout game, but um, while, you've, while you're there, at least hopefully you've got some content to put on madfriars.com, or is it a complete watch, no pun intended? Uh, it 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 was not the day I thought it was going to be. That's for sure. We uh, were sitting about fifty eight degrees and rain for four hours this afternoon. So uh, the game got banged. They're going to try and do some approximation of it again next Saturday. Unfortunately, uh, John Connor. Uh, so we'll yeah. still have. Uh, it it was not, not going to yield as much as I thought it. For you, like, what player was really keeping an eye on? And what player should the Padres fans keep an eye on? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it really was, was going to focus heavily on the now. Uh, the plan was for Robbie Snell to throw two innings for Adam Hazen. One is he gets ramped up for the next week, his first full healthy session. Um, you know, Snelling obviously really impressed in his uh, time in big league camp this year. Um, you know, coming off of probably the best uh, overall season of any any project that this process has in the uh, world, and is pretty clearly one of those top handful of. Game. And really, I think Lesko is the one that, that you want to see this year is he's healthy. Um, he's got the chance to, to really take over. Everybody is very From Peoria, unfortunately, the Padres uh, breakout game was canceled today. I still need to talk about it. You know, just mentioned Sam and Mesco. They did not go to the North Sox in the game. They were able to go to the North Sox in the game. They were able to go to the North Sox the right decision to make here. As far as the North Sox in the game, they were able to go to the North Sox in the game. Yeah, so in Very clearly, the um, it was through Tuesday morning, and it was two thirds of the month. So, while we had Uriarte and Dorf, and and Tennis Collins, and his um, you know, I, I think it was still pretty clear that uh, what they wanted. Obviously, 
a young runner up. Uh, just got a couple of years to go up. And the short form is reacting to both. I think our two are going to have a year. They each have a couple of years to go up. They each have a couple of years to go up. Land just did not strike the ball enough to make the school stuff play at a different level. And for, you know, you've got that position there. And with, you know, with that ball, 91, 92, we know that the changeup really is the one pitch, but I think you can get to the top level in that spot. And I think you know, you take the chance to get one or both of those guys to, um, to, to be long term big league providers. Um, but you, you trade off a, a real strong rotation sort of guy. Yeah, and as this team, where they're at, it's like, guys, it's just like, okay, this is good now. Look at the numbers they have on the last players. And I was with Dylan C. I feel like, wrong, like, we need now to get to that club club season. We need to make this team out. That's great. It's not like a, oh my God, they can. Completely overpaid for Dylan What do you think they did? Um, I don't think they overpaid. I think they, they, you know, I think if you look at what the Orioles gave up for one year uh, in in the trade with Milwaukee for for Curran, you know, they gave up a pitcher who's certainly you know high various things. I don't know, similar to that or that. In their case, they gave up. Um, and that was for one year. I think if you look at the package that Padres gave up, and the Padres gave up, and Aaron Smaller as well, uh, and, and obviously the Blazers and the Blazers. So I think, I think those two packages probably show they're in the same ballpark, given that you're doing some of the same uh, with their release. David Jim Cashfire is joining us from the community. That's what's going to happen. He's going to be a center fielder. He'll be the third 20-year-old in the history of the sport to start in center field. Um, what are your thoughts on him being in the big leagues? Yeah, and, and clearly he's had a really good night. That's good news. But um, if not, then this stuff is good for everybody. Um, you know, I mean, I think he's, he's a guy who you know, look at the tool set that they have. I I feel like unless I have a set style that they can carry with them, then I think he's a good uh, possible prospect. So I think he is the best prospect they've got. Um, I. Day one, but I also think he's a guy who, who, if you look at the makeup, you look at the way he's built, the things that he's going to be coming on his way, and he's, he's you know, taking it as personal talent to improve and get where he wants. So, you know, I, I think I, I was glad to see him get to the group there last week before they were headed out to Korea. They moved him down to the bottom of the line, and then he just was a special opportunity to get that set. Um, you know, and, Long term, I think he's going to be a really good player, um, I, and and we'll see how he moves to get there. Yeah, no, I, I can maintain that for sure. And the risk is that it just is. You know, you have to see how he's going to be able to get a shot at him. You have to see how he responds to that. But it's not like that. He can change from some of the new players. When he if when he fails, how is he going to respond to that? But the guys that are going to be at the big league level, like the Grant 
Foley. He's not going to get everyday bats, but for him and other players like Tyler Wade, whatever, how much of a concern is it for those types of players? Well, he waits three years to get a Um, you know, I think he is he is what he is and he is really valuable in the world. Um, you know, always an interesting case. I think in some ways offensively, um, I I think he's probably more ready for the big things today than than maybe that. Um, but you know, the question really is is that how much time is he gonna get? You know, is in until Danny Machado is ready to play for a day. Uh, I think they're going to be with that match that he had, and you know, if, if he can get to a place where he, you know, some games at first base, some games at third base, you know, you roll him out at third every now and then, I, you know, I don't think that's going to be long term for the first half. Um, so maybe you know, you can get those two or three left field. Um, you know, you you can get that match for him, and you know, he's he, he, he doing so well, he's doing the opportunity.
right, Boss Up here on John Jim on a Friday, getting you ready. Bring you up some Aztec basketball at 6 p.m. is when our pregame show starts with Fletch and John with in Las Vegas. 6.30, tip-off time, give or take a couple minutes there. Um, but Brent, let's, uh, let's get to it. Oh. <laughs> yes. 760. <laughs> first things first. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You were dealing with a little crisis behind the scenes here. Uh, Brent's microphone just stopped working. So because yeah, I can't hear myself. So you so can't. Gonna, oh, you can't no, hear yourself. No, but if you say it's working. Oh, perfect. We're good. It's great. Awesome. Things aren't just falling apart around here or anything. Um, all is well. All is well. So you're a big video game guy, Brent. Oh, yeah. Huge video game guy. Fletch, are you a video game guy back there? Eh, off and on. I used to be a video game guy, but then, like, I don't know. I I just didn't like any of the... Vi- I got mad. Like, when I couldn't complete a game, I would just get, like, super upset. And it would take you're a up- rage quitter? Yeah, it would take, like, all my time, and I just got mad about it. But now that NCAA college football is coming back, and then GTA 6 is coming out, I I eventually will have to buy a PS5. But every year, they do the National Video Game Hall of Fame. Okay. And they announced the finalists that span four decades. There's 12 finalists for the National Video Game Hall of Fame. Here's the finalist. Asteroids. Okay. Elite. That was developed in Great Britain, pioneered innovative 3D graphics and the idea of open world games by allowing players to control ships that roamed the galaxy. Okay, never heard of that one. Guitar Hero, we've all heard of that one. Yeah. Nintendo's Meteoroid. Metroid? Metroid, sorry. (laughs) Tell everyone that you didn't play Nintendo without telling everyone. Exactly. Myst? Yes, I know Myst. Um, The browser-based free-to-play Neopets, okay, yeah, Neopets. They're they're like a what's it called Digi Pets or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Resident Evil. Oh yeah, it's classic. I used to play this game all the time. Sim City was awesome. Uh, there, we used to have Sim City on one of the computers in our homeroom in school, and everyone would just go through and destroy everyone's cities. So they'd build cities and then come oh, into the homeroom, and there'd be aliens and tornadoes and everything destroying their cities. Dude, I loved Sim City. I would spend hours playing original Sim City, and then I would do all the the code hacks to like get all the money. Oh yeah, because otherwise it's hard. It's so hard. I'm like, I, I I want to have unlimited money to build my houses. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I played that game so much yeah. when I was a kid. Um, Ultima. Yeah, I know that. And you don't know Jack. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of those. Those are trivia games. So those are the games. The finalists, uh, the top vote getters will be in, uh, inducted on May 9th. So you can now go vote for the four games that could be voted into the Video Game Hall of Fame. Uh, online voting is open until March 21st. Okay. So there you go. Um, Brent, did you ever watch X-Files? No, not really. I I thought it was like too scary when i was a kid (laughs) like i don't know why i just didn't want to watch it i just couldn't get into it there's some episodes that i've seen parts of that i wouldn't mind going back and watching them now because they have some episodes that are just like really weird that i wanted to watch but but uh scully and Mulder, those are two names that uh those are the main characters in uh x files well today a winning bid for the Mulder and Scully's FBI badges from the original X Files series from 1993 to 2002, these were props. Obviously, were sold today for guess how much? For the pair or each? For the pair. Twenty thousand. Very good guess. Twenty five thousand. Nice. Twenty five thousand dollars. Someone bought the original. Mulder and Scully FBI badges from X Files. Interesting. They're I don't awesome. know if I would pay that much money, but again, I'm sure I'm not the demo. I'm not the big time X Files. Like had a cool theme song. They had a very cool theme song. Very cool theme song. But uh, twenty five thousand dollars for the FBI badges for Mulder and Scully. Um, if you want your name 
to go to the moon. I guess like, you know, when they do like bricks outside the ballparks, I guess this is like the same type of concept for the moon. Who the hell's going to see it? Um, That's a very good question. You know, I get, I get a brick outside, you know, Petco. Someone's going to walk on my brick and go, oh, look, there's Brent's brick. Who the hell's going to walk on the moon and be like, hey, look, there's Jim's brick. So the deadline is nearly here to send your name aboard NASA's first robotic moon rover as it hunts for frozen water. The presence of water on the lunar surface was first confirmed in 2020. Um, and now in 2024, the Federal Space Agency is inviting people to send their names to the surface of the moon aboard Viper, which stands to investigate polar exploration on the moon. Um, the deadline to submit your name to travel aboard Viper is Friday, March 15th, which is today. 9 p.m. Pacific. So if you want your name to go to the moon, hurry up. better hurry up, everybody. Better hurry up. I don't really think it's a big Like you said, Brent, who's going to see it? Like if it was if it was a thing where I could see it on the moon, like a brick, like that'd be cool. But other than that, I don't know. Whatever. All right. I want to thank uh, John for joining us on his own show today. I want to thank Kevin AC, David J from Mad Friars, Brent, and all you out there for listening, watching, wherever you are. Coming up next, Aztecs pregame as they get ready to take on Utah State in the semifinals of the Mount West Conference Tournament. Aztecs, Utah State, tonight. John and Fletch have the pregame for you coming up next on San Diego Sports 76.